I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get the chat window moved over, guys, so I can see what y'all saying, which is nifty. Let me bring it up here. Dun, 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 dun. You're gonna be hearing the dog going crazy in the background. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but she is having a hissy fit right now. In glorious, glorious fashion, indeed. All right, so we've got the chat room up. Looks like everything is going. All right, I'm going to assume you guys can hear me. At least I hope. Pretty sure we're good. Do -do -do. All right. All right, so I am still getting my um, what you call it, airbrush stuff situation situated over here, guys. So you'll be able to uh, peruse the cool looking model that's laying here for just a moment while I move everything over. And the dog's still going crazy in the background for whatever reason. Audio is up. Sweet. All right. Um, music is going. Okay. Moving everything over. All right. Cool. Now I'm gonna grab my airbrush stuff. the clamp going whoop whoop okay so we got that going sweet get our handy dandy spray pots our airbrush cleaning fluid the paints we're gonna be using Got our water. Doot. Doot. Got our paintbrushes. And our paper towel. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's get this adjusted here. Boop, boop. Hang on, can we see the camera move a smidge? The desk has been reorganized since last time, so I'm kind of moving some stuff around here. Okay. Got my caffeine ready. All right, uh, so for you guys who are tuning in, if you have not already, which it doesn't look like you have, uh, don't forget to type in the keyword for chat so you can be entered to win the mo this model. 
Um, it's all one phrase, uh, why so red? No spaces, just why so red. Uh, that'll enter your name into the contest. So at the end of the stream, I will be able to do a drawing. And uh, one of you guys will win the, uh, the miniature, which will be pretty cool. So anyway, let's get started here. Like we did last week, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to drill this guy's barrel on his gun. I'm going to do that on live stream so you guys can check that out. And we shall check out the tools. So like I said last week, you just need a pin vise or hand drill, whatever you find it as online. Don't go spend a bajillion dollars on this from Games Workshop because they charge too daggum much for what you're going to use this for. So we're just going to put our little drill bit in here. And you have to be careful with these little ones because they're a little flimsy and uh, you can bend or break them. So what we're going to do is pick up our model here and we're going to try and line this up dead center. Looks like I might have that properly. Just do a couple light twirls real quick. And then kind of look at it. it. Looks like we've got it lined up good. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more twirls. Get that a little deeper in there. Do, 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 do. No rush on that. Just make sure you're going straight. You don't want a crooked uh, barrel tip on there. And then we're going to come in from the uh, side of this. This is not drilled all the way through. We're just going to go ahead and drill that all the way through. So we're going to line that up. Just going real gentle like here. Don't want to snap the bit and we don't want this to go in sideways. There we go. Do a couple of uh, counterclockwise rotations to get it to release. And do, 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 do. Pull it out. And now gonna be hard to see because this is models currently white and it's over white thing but you can kind of see the whole like if you look at my ring skin and then ring you can see through the hole there and barrels drilled so now let me put my drill bit up I always put these up between each uh, or when I'm not using them so I don't lose them or get them messed up and this little kit I bought has a variety of little drill bits so uh, you could drill lots of little holes or um, put bullet holes and stuff like that on your vehicles relatively easily. Of course I put them in the wrong side of it. Go down. There we go. What's up Chase? How are you doing? Um, just so you don't miss it since I just gave everybody else an update, don't forget the um, uh, little chat code to win the model is why so red. You just type that in all one word and that should enter you into the contest. All right, um, so let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room done here. Why does this model have pink on it? Um, this is um, what I use for masking. This is a little um, professional tip here uh, for you guys. If you're going to mask off a model, you can totally use this stuff. I'm telling you, this is a secret. This is Silly Putty. You just pick this up at the dollar store or Walmart. A couple bucks, um, get you a two-pack, and it's great. Uh, it adheres well without pulling up the paint on the model. You can pull it off really easy. It's malleable, so you can get it where you need to go, and you can use it a lot. It's going to absorb the paint without, you know, when you re-knead it into the other um, stuff, it's not really going to, like, have paint residue. Uh, so it's it's really effective um, and not that expensive. So um, you'll also notice this week compared to last week, there's a little bit of overspray because under this is yellow shoulder pads. I like Blood Angels with the yellow shoulders. I think that might be um, veteran sergeants. I'm not sure. Um, but that's what I went with. So there's a little bit of overspray that's going to get covered. His helmet and his backpack have a little bit of light brown from last week, the bark. We're doing that because we want a little bit of a shade, but we still want brighter red on the top. And then on the rest of his armor, we have gone with um, Muddy Brown from Minotaur and just their Steinal Res uh, White Primer. Um, we do this so we get a two-tone um, primer layer so that when we do the other colors, we get a... Uh, a gradient without having to uh, work too hard at it or hand paint it which is super awesome and you're gonna get some really good effects quickly so now that I've explained the yellow shoulder pads with the pink uh, masking putty over it or silly putty um, we're gonna get right in here in just a second and we are going to start painting him red Boop. alright so we're gonna be using 
Move my sorry, I had to move a window over real quick. All right. So first thing is first for the airbrush part. We're gonna put on some gloves or a glove. I don't like having too much paint on my left hand. It's not so bad when it's uh, painted like uh, hand painted paint, but with the airbrush, kind of goes everywhere, and you end up with paint all over yourself, which we don't want. So first thing we're gonna do after that, I guess that's technically the second thing. We are going to start spraying this model. Let's make sure our airbrush is cleared. Helps if you turn on your compressor. Just saying, don't forget that. Looks like our airbrush has no obstructions. Uh, no problem, buddy. Uh, at least you're entered into the contest. If you win and you're not here, I'll send you a message and let you know. No big deal. I uh, appreciate the support regardless. So, I'm making sure my airbrush is not obstructed, guys. Looks like everything's coming out good. Alright, so first color we're going to start with is Angelic Blood from uh, Minotaur. I'm a big fan. We're giving it a good shake here. Um, I'm a big fan of Minotaur's paints. I'm slightly biased because it's all I really use. I know, um, I think it's Vallejo Model Air has some pre-thinned airbrush paint, I think. Um, I use this because it's what I've got and it's good and consistent. Now, I would totally try the other paint out if I owned it, but since I don't, we're going to be using this and I'm going to be pushing Badger products. Anyway, I'm going to start by uh, applying the Angelic Blood and we're going to be uh, um, focusing on the bottom side of the model where the darker red will be. I want to leave some of this white showing for the next uh, you know, few uh, layers of colors. So, here we go. Spray, I spray on the back of my hand first, make sure it's coming out well. There's no extra cleaning material in there. Looks like it's coming out. Make sure the tip's not obstructed. And let's just start going in here and laying down some red. Don't want it to pull, so thin coats. If it's not covering super well in one area, just get a little bit on there. Starting to clog up on me. And uh, just come back, no big deal. Don't be impatient. This is still going to be faster than painting by hand. I uh, promise. Hang on one second. Coagulated on me up there at the front. Boop. Okay. So let's keep going with the red here. You'll notice where the uh, white portions were and the dark portions, the red is reacting, so it's going to be lighter in those white spots, darker in the dark spots. And this thing is giving me a world of trouble right now. Hang on. I'm not sure why the, it's clogging on me. Turn the PSI just up just a little bit, see if that helps. Bring it down there by the feet. You notice we're still leaving some of that white at the top. And I think we're probably pretty good with that color now. Make sure we get that underside pretty good. Alright. So now we're going to switch colors. Boop. And just like last time, we're going to be coming from the top with a different color. But give me a moment to uh, clean this out. Pretty, pretty stickler about keeping my airbrush as clean as possible so that I minimize cloggages. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and spray this into our spray pot. Still giving me some a trouble. Turn the mic a little bit. You guys probably don't want to hear me spraying in the spray pot too loud. Okay, let's dump the excess into our little dealio. Sorry, this stuff's taking a little bit longer. The uh, the paint thickened up on me in this. I don't know why. It might be might not have shook it. Nah, 
might not have shaken it up as well as I should have. It happens. This is why you have extra airbrushes on uh, quick release, which I do. They're on the other side of the room. All right. So for the next step, we're going to be using Nebula Red from Minotaur, and we're going to be using Scorching Red also from Minotaur, and we're going to be going um, one to one mixture with this. So I'm going to count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll do it. And then give this one a good shake. And we're going to do seven of this one. Assuming the paint comes up. Hang on. Got to stab the top. All right. So count them out here. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. We're going to mix this up in our airbrush. And this is just going to give us um, a little bit of a brighter red. That's what I like to go with. Okay. And now we are going to spray from like a 45 degree angle down. Try and leave a little bit of that red from the top if you can. Again, spray on the back of my hand. Make sure the color's coming out, which it is. Dip. And we're going to come downwards now. So down direction. Catching the tops of... The knees, the hands, stuff like that. I don't know why this thing's giving me so much trouble today. Remember, top of the hands. And we want to try and keep the angle consistent, so you're not you're not just basing the whole model. Now you're trying to base or um get the spots where the shadows weren't because we're coming in from the top. This is the light source, basically. Get the top of the backpack here. Good. Get part of the helmet here. I'm going to get the top of the gun here because I think we're going to leave part of this gun casing red today. So we'll see. All right, and we've got one stage left. See, right now he's pretty well red. Hang on, this is fun. This back in there. We're pretty good. All right. So now we're going to clean this out real fast. And I've just got a little cup of water right here I'm using. If you guys don't see it, I figure you don't want to watch me clean paintbrushes. If you want to, I'll move it into frame. But... We're just cleaning out our airbrush real fast. Dumping the excess back into this little paint container or a water water by the water cup. And now I'm gonna run a little cleaning fluid through it. Like last week you guys totally showed up to watch me watch paint dry. The airbrush step is relatively quick. Now, if you were doing this on a batch of models, the uh, airbrush, you, you wouldn't have to um, clean in between quite as often because you'd be painting more than one model for each stage. So right now, the cleaning process seems a little tedious when it's just one model, but not so bad when you only have to do it every once in a while because there's multiple models. Now, the last thing we do is take just straight scorching red again from Minotaur. And this one's going to be like the extreme highlight. We're going to come from the top. We don't want this to blow the model out, but coming from the top. Shouldn't need more than a couple drops of this. Again, spray on the back of my hand, make sure it's coming out. Now we're going to hold him in this time, straight down angle. And we left a little bit of a thin coat on his helmet. And that's kind of where we want to make sure we cover up so there's no more primer showing through it. Top of the feet, the knees, the back. Okay. All right, and I think we have a nice, nope, a little bit of back of his helmet got missed, so let's make sure we come in. And you guys might not see some of where I'm seeing the um, primer showing through, but trust me, it was there. And we're going to get a little bit from this angle, the top of the back of his foot, and the 
knee here on his right foot. I'm gonna get the top of that. You notice I'm doing like quick little um, bursts. So let me clean out this now. What up, Nathan? What up? Nice to see you actually show up for once, since uh, apparently you didn't know my schedule for, for uh, streams. Which you should, since you leave, live 10 feet away. Don't worry, I don't give my address out on stream, so nobody's going to come uh, troll you. Yeah, I'll give a close-up in just a second. I'm cleaning out the airbrush now. We're, we're going to be done with it for a little bit. Yeah, sorry. 300 feet, not 20 feet. If it was artillery, we'd probably still on point. Well, 7th edition artillery anyway. <laughs> anyway. So basically, again, guys, I'm just, I'm just cleaning this out. Um, like I've said in previous streams, I don't like to leave this. Oh, nice! All right. Anyway, uh, as I said in previous streams, I don't like to have uh, paint dry up in the reservoir of the airbrush, so I'm really meticulous with cleaning. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me while I clean this out. Worst thing you want to have happen is to be trying to airbrush, and you go to grab it, and the thing is dried full of paint. You don't want that. Uh, sure. I fill it up with some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, as I said last time, I also get a little paintbrush here. And I just clean out the reservoir with it. With a little poo poo brush with some bristles, make sure it's clean. And then I run this fluid through it into a paint um, paint pot. And uh, sometimes I run some backwash, so I'll, I'll cut the end. And you, you might hear it. I run the airbrush, but it's bouncing fluid, so it's pushing the paint out of the, the nose. And then I just spray the excess into the paint pot. And that's it. Well, I know a guy who's going to sell you one at some point, so you'll be able to handle all that stuff. Anyway. Now we're, we're clean. I've also moved the needle back into uh, the back of the airbrush so that since I'm not using it, it's going to be stored and not get bent, knocked over. Um, for those of you who are slightly clumsy, <coughs> hire a man. <laughs> uh, it's good to uh, key in on that by um, remembering to pull your needle back. Um, since you're not familiar with the airbrush, I'll show you. There's a little nut back here. When you loosen it, the needle moves. So it'll come out the tip. See, it's showing now. No, it's not. What happens is when this needle or uh, this nut is cr or torqued, when you move this, it moves the needle. So what I've done is just move the needle back. So no matter where this moves, the needle's not exposed. So I won't knock it over and and bend the tip. You bend the tip, you can ruin the uh, tip and have to get a, a new one. So anyway, now let's see where we're at with this red. So this is just three colors. Uh, again, angelic red. Or angelic blood, uh, nebula red, um, and scorching red. That's what we've used. Granted, the scorching and nebula were mixed, but that is what we've used. I forgot to pull this. I also put a little bit of lubrication in my airbrush as well. I didn't show that, but uh, helps keep things clean and flowing. All right, so we're done with the airbrush for a little bit. I'm going to take off this glove. Shwoop, because we won't need it. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the silly putty. All right, so now that we've got the uh, the red down, we're gonna just take our silly putty. It doesn't matter; you don't have to have all of it. We're just gonna form a tip here, and we're gonna dab it onto the shoulder pad. Push down with a little force, pulls the silly putty back off. You know, get a little tip here. Push down with a little force. Whoop! Didn't quite get enough force, and silly putty's right off. So now we've got these yellow shoulder pads on our Blood Angel. And again, I'm not sure where I first saw this, but I always liked it because it's red shoulder or a yellow shoulder pad with um, black borders and the red armor. It's going to make the decal show up really well. And um, I think it's veterans. I'm not positive. Um, you'll also notice there's a little bit of a sheen on these shoulders. I pre-did this step when uh, before we did the live stream because it was a little easier because um, I had to mask it off and all that stuff afterwards. But uh, I went ahead and put the gloss varnish over this so that uh, when we get to the airbrush step, um, or airbrush the uh, decal step, that's already done and we can apply the decals really easily. What's up, Chris? Um, for those of you guys who may not know, uh, Chris did not get to make it. Um, what I know his name, uh, Wheels McCripple here, I know him. This is one of my, actually I think it is my number one commission client, so uh, I totally just put you on blast there, buddy. 
Uh, he missed last week's live stream. Um, I actually painted the um, Imperial Fist last week. The commission I'm working on right now is Imperial Fists, and it's for him, and he didn't get to make the live stream. It would have been pretty awesome if he won the model, because then I would just ship it with his project, uh, which would have been pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I'm doing pretty good, buddy. How are you doing? I know there's a little bit of delay, so uh, while he's getting ready to reply here, uh, next step, we're going to be doing a wash. We just get one of these little, um, I think at Walmart they call these party sauce cups. I think you can order them online a lot cheaper. You get them at the store. They usually have ranch or, you know, salad dressing or something in them. Don't spend a buku amount of money. Walmart charged me way too much. I didn't realize I could order, um, you know, a bajillion of them on Amazon for a couple of dollars. Um, but uh, these are really good for mixing paints, particularly washes. And if you mix a lot, you can put the cat or the lid on them, and the washes will save for a little while. Not forever. They'll eventually dry, but, you know, a couple of days, you can, you can store them. Oh, nice. Well, at least you got entered in the contest. I wish you luck. Uh, what army are you playing? Hopefully it's one of mine that I painted. Wink, wink, hint, hint. Uh, while he's responding, we're going to grab our washes. For the next step... Oh, got something in my ball. Sorry, guys. So next step, we're going to be prepping the um, the wash. Oh, man. Ooh, got an eyelash in my eyeball. Ooh, emergency. Oh, you good? You guys can't see me because no cam up. But if you could... Oh, man, I'm like knuckle deep in my eyelid trying to get it out. Oh, hey, dude. Okay, uh, caveat, I did not paint his orcs. I think I've painted his um, Nurgle Marines, Blood Angels slash... Um, um, Death Company, Eldar, and IG. I did not paint his orcs. <laughs> um, but yeah, in this edition, orcs are pretty good, I think. Um, they've balanced out a lot. I've gotten my ass handed to me by Tyranids recently in a low-power game. Um, matter of fact, the guy who beat the crap out of me is in the stream right now. I won't uh, say his name, but he's here. <laughs> um, orcs and Tyranids are no joke these days, in my opinion. Um, there's some bad matchups you can have with them, I think. But in general, I think the armies are good. So, um, So while he is checking that out... Oh, ooh, nice, dude. Nice. Um, so we're going to be doing our wash now, and we're going to be mixing a, a mix. So I'm doing a uh, two or a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. So we're going to be putting two, three, four. Four drops of Agrax into this little pot here. What up, Adaday? I remember your name from last week. How are you doing, buddy? While well, he's replying, um, since we have four drops of... Agrax in there, and you can use a little eyedropper or something. I just use a brush and count props. It's not super precise, but it's close. Uh, we're going to put four drops of this when it decides to pull up. One, two, three, four. And we're going to get the excess back in, back in here. Clean our brush off. Take it easy, Chris. Good luck. Um, if you think about it, snap some photos and send them to me on Facebook. I'll check them out tonight. So we've got our one to one ratio of Agrax and known oil in here. It's going to create like a dark brown. Now we're going to put in eight drops of some matte varnish from Liquitex. They have um, some matte medium. It's too thick for me. I really like the varnish with washes because it comes out almost like Lamian medium from GW. So eight drops. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I feel kind of like the count from Sesame Street, teaching guys to count. Yeah, yeah, dude. And you can do that with um, um, spray cans, too. Like, you could hand paint, like, a lot of this to do with airbrush because it's quick. But you could hand paint things with colors and then use a colored primer, if that's what you have to do, over a masked off piece. Pull off the mask and good to go, especially with shoulder pads. Uh, and on these in particular, because the shoulder pads come as one piece. Um, if you were doing a batch of these, you could even do the shoulder pads separate if they weren't on the model, but yeah, the masking thing's great. So next thing we're gonna do to create our wash here, I'm just gonna try and get one drop of this Liquitex Flow Aid. Uh, what this is gonna do is lower lower the surface tension of your wash and help it. Ooh, ooh, I might have put too much in there. Uh, all right, we're gonna put some more wash to balance out the uh, the mix. Anyway, it's gonna help your stuff get down into the cracks and recesses a little bit better. So since I got that mix terribly, terribly off. We're going to put in three drops, two, three, and we're going to try and bring this back to close. Getting drops out of my uh, flow aid things has been tough lately because it's getting towards the bottom, so it just kind of flows out when I tip it. 
Um, I might get a dropper bottle for that in the future, so it's a little bit easier to control. One, two, three. I could also pre-make this wash before the stream, too. Then you guys wouldn't watch me uh, mix some paints. But, you know me, I like to socialize. Alright, that should be good. Now I'm just going to use a little poo-poo brush, and we're going to mix this up. Don't do your washes with a very expensive brush. Have the right tool for the job. If you're doing grungy work, use a grungy brush. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't use you know grungy brushes on a high-quality mini, but each step of the mini is going to be a different quality of paint job. And for washes and dry brushing, you don't need a high-quality brush to get um, a high-quality effect, so to speak. So... And you'll notice I've propped this up on my palette, so it's at a, a tilt here. What up, guys? What up? All right, so we're going to get our Poo Poo Kachu paintbrush here. Now, I mentioned this last week. This is from Back to Basics. Uh, a few years ago, they sent me a pack to do a review for Brush for Hire. These are cool because they twist, unscrew, and you can put the brush inside and screw it back up so you can throw these in your pocket and uh, take them to the store with you or to a convention whatever um, the reason this one's been um, relegated to uh, grunge work duty is it stopped holding a tip really well um, along with the other ones they sent me it is Kalinsky Sable um, bristles that just didn't do well I also have some of the games and gears ones that I don't know if it's a bad batch they did the same thing um, so they both kinda got uh, turned into grungy stuff so well, you, you're not interrupting my stream, you're just hanging out. So, anyway, we're going to take our wash now that I've went on my side tangent. We have way more than we need, but hopefully I got the mix right. And we're just going to lather it on them. Um, you don't want it to pool terribly, so, you know, make sure there's no air bubbles in it, which can happen. And just pull it around, and if you see it pooling too much, just come back in with your paintbrush in. Get the pool off. And what this is going to do is it's going to go on, it's going to give a dark brown to help get in the recesses. It's going to bring this red down a shade. Um, I usually go a shade brighter on models than I intend to with the airbrush because I like using washes to get the recesses. So the wash brings it down a shade and brings us back about where we want to be. So that's what I like to do. Let's make sure we get that recess of the foot there. Come back around the back. And this is something everybody can do. Even without airbrush, you can prep the model in different ways and still apply washes in a thin down matter. And when it's thinned down like this, you get a little bit more control, more time to react, and it, um, you know, if you mess up somewhere, it's not going to discolor the model immediately, which is very useful. I'm going to come down the other leg now. Turn on. Do, 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 do. Back of the leg. Okay, we're going to get his butt. Don't forget to wash his butt. You don't want a Marine who doesn't have a washed butt. That'd be a dirty butt. A Marine with a dirty butt is no use to the Imperium. So now we've got the legs washed. We're going to wash the totality here. We're going to come up and do his chest. We're going to try and steer clear of the yellow though. It's glossed over and we don't. This is going to dry matte, so if we put this over the yellow, it's going to take away some of the slickness, so we're not going to wash the yellow yet. Let's, uh, let's come around and get the back here. And some of this will be a little bit easier if you leave like the backpack off. You can get in here a little bit easier, but sometimes I just like to assemble a model and go at it because. It can save a little bit of time, but if you're going for quick paint jobs, there are some corners you can cut. If you're doing a display piece, you may do it in steps, or on um, pieces. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get his, uh, let's get his helmet here. And the back of his neck, or gorget, or whatever that thing's called. You'll notice I kind of also tilt them, get different angles to get in there. Now 
And right now, uh, I'm going to drag the brush across the top of his helmet to try and pull this wash just a little bit. Yeah, because it's going to give us a little bit of a shadow on the tip or the top of his helmet here. I'm going to try and let that dry that way. So sometimes you can play with the washes with the way they pull to get a little bit of a, a gradient. So we're going to come over here and wash his arm. Giving this marine a bath. Dirty. The foes of the Imperium. I've gotten him dirty. We're going to wash the bolt gun. Doesn't matter if you get everything in the bolt gun in this step. What we're going to do here is leave the casing on it red in this particular model instead of black. I think that's going to look good with the Blood Angel. Um, just the top half. So that's where we really want to focus the wash. Okay, I think we got everything on it. Make sure we got the top there. Nice. Make sure you don't have any excessive pooling anywhere as you're moving around. They look pretty good so far. You'll notice I clean my brush periodically as well. You don't want the wash to dry up in it, even on your poop brushes. Still try and uh, take care of them well, because then they're the poo poo jobs. The paint brushes for those will last longer. And you won't have to replace poo poo brushes for poo poo jobs at the rate that you poop. I don't know why I like saying that word today, but I've had a lot of caffeine, so sometimes I say goofy stuff. Alright, so right now we're just washing his right arm now. And we're just making sure we cover everything and get in all the little recesses. Uh, nope. Actually, I was talking to Chris about that. Um, he sent me an orc to paint for his buddy that'll be here this week, so I've got some time. I told him I'm going to try and have him done next week if I can. I'd like to have them done this weekend, but because my birthday is Sunday, there's probably going to be family stuff happening this weekend, and my time's probably going to be limited. So I didn't want to make any promises, you know. So we're just washing the backpack here. It's got lots of little recesses and crevices, which are cool, because the wash is going to pop. And because it's um, thin and subtle, we can move it around without discoloring the red too much, but still leave it in the recesses and get those shadows we want. Make sure you get the underside. Try not to touch the yellow here. Alright. There we go. I'm going to let that dry for a second. Show you guys where we're at. Just letting the wash dry. And you'll see like the knee's a good, uh, good example. Um, you can see how it's like dark on the underside and it fades to a light red. That's not a trick of the light, that's what we've done with the airbrush. You can turn around the backpack, you can see it as well. It's still wet, but the bottom's dark, top's white. Uh, leg here, this is a little bit lighter red than this leg. Um, it's subtle, but it is. Um, so as you see it, you'll notice like this side of his left leg's dark, that side's lighter red. So we, we've created a gradient with the airbrush that's really smooth and quick. And then we use the wash to get in on the cracks to give us a dark line and to uh, help bring it down one shade. And it's subtle. So, there you go. Now while he's drying, um, do, 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 do. I guess we'll get into the edge highlight step. That's going to be it's gonna be a big chunk of this model this evening. Um, let's see, it should be done with the wash. Boop. All right. So for his highlights, let me get my uh, little paintbrush here. We are going to be using a mix of some paints. Um, you could use a, a red orange color, something that's you know really close to red, or mix a little bit of red in with some orange or whatever. But we're going to be using the color from last week. We did on the Imperial Fist. We're using flat yellow from Vallejo Model Color, and we're just going to put a couple drops down. I think we're going to start with two, one. And where's our other paint here? We're going to be mixing it with Evil Sun's Scarlet. And if I recall, we're going to be going with a one-to-one. -one. This isn't going to be exactly scientific because we're using a paintbrush to do it, but just kind of get one paintbrush full, two paintbrush full. So give or take, that's probably more like a uh, two-to-one red to yellow, but close enough. And if you get this wrong, just mix a little bit more yellow in. You'll get there. We're going to add some drops of water to thin it down. And this is just a little dropper. Get these off Amazon, like a million pack for a dollar or something crazy. 
And while he's trying, we're just going to mix this paint on the palette. And what that yellow did is it's just going to tone down, or um, bring up the uh, orange or the the uh, red uh, shade more towards like a an orange color or close to it. Still want it to be red, but borderline because we want you know a brighter red. You don't want to use white because that's going to make more of a pink. You want to use yellow or orange to bring it more towards the orange color. So, so I add another drop of water. Keep you know, get this a little bit thinner. It was a little bit thick. And you'll notice as you start to thin down paints and stuff like that, you'll get used to a consistency you like. And what I'm doing is I'm dragging the side of this inside my palette to get the excess paint off. Now you can also use a wet palette, palette things like that, but I only really do that if I'm trying to do wet blending. It would probably actually be good for this so I don't have to mix another batch while I'm live stream, but wet palette's in the room, and it's not a big deal. So let's see how this guy's looking. Have you dried significantly? You don't want to edge highlight on areas that are wet because you don't want the uh, the paint to actually mix with the wash and uh, blend in with the cracks. So it's important to give. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's a little bit on the shoulder pad. Hang on, damage control. Hit the shoulder pad with some wash. Trying to get it off, and it's gone. Another benefit of the uh, uh, gloss varnish on the shoulder pads is that uh, it's slick, so you can get paint off a little bit easier. So we're going to start by working on some edge highlights on his right leg here. And you'll notice um, I do this a lot. I'll get the paint brush with paint and I'll usually drag it across the back of my thumb to get a tip and get excess off if there's too much. So we're going to start by going down his uh, leg plate here. And we don't always use the tip. We're going to use the side of the paint brush to get the highlight. You'll notice I get quiet when I'm doing this a lot of times. I'm holding my breath, almost like I'm shooting a gun. So, maybe hard to see, but we did a highlight um, right here. Okay. We're going to come now, and we're going to try and highlight the high points. There's going to be some exaggerated highlights here. We're going to come up under the knee and just do a little bit of a crescent under the knee, knee pad. Not all the way, just a little bit. Try and taper it out. Come back over and do that one more time. Get the red a little bit more consistent. There we go. Yeah. This mix might require doing the highlights twice. There we go. Cool. Now, this is really subtle. This is not super uh, super bright. So we're going to come over the knee here. We're going to try and get uh, a crescent across the top of the knee pad, right under uh, where the other thing is. But let's see if I can do this on camera so you guys can see. We're going to taper it down where we just did the one near the uh, underside. Taper it. Come around the other side. Do the same thing. I'm going to taper. Okay. Some more wash here. We're going to take this uh, little ankle uh, circle deal and we're going to do the same thing we did on the knee pad. We're going to put a crescent at the top. We're just going to be kind of going over the whole model here, picking out highlight areas and stuff like that. So uh, We're going to get under the knee. There's a little armor plate here, so we're going to highlight under here. Just put a little red line. And then the top of that piece. There we go. And let's get, uh, let's see if we can get the top of this knee pad here. So we're going to try and get the top of the knee pad here using the side of the paintbrush. Bob Ross would say, two hairs and some air, real close. I'm also constantly looking up to make sure the camera's in focus or I'm not off screen doing this because I have a habit of highlighting in weird spots. Okay. There we go. And we're going to just catch this side right here. Do, 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 do. And 
And um, up on the side of his leg, there's a little protruding uh, armor cap thing. We're going to highlight the top of that and drag it down. Um, probably sometime this evening, I'll finish, I'm estimating finishing at 8.30, 9 o'clock, somewhere in there. We'll see how long this takes, uh, or if I speed up from last week. Um, so sometime after that, um, I would imagine it'll be uploaded and, uh, viewable before midnight. Um, but it, it should be up at some point, just matters how, uh, how quickly I can finish this guy, to be honest. And like I said, if you happen to win, I will uh, shoot you a message. If you're not in the stream, you did enter, so you should be good to go. Uh, right now, we're getting the underside of the leg here above the foot. This is a spot you may not normally have a highlight. We're putting a little bit of one to exaggerate. Some of the highlights you want to be where light is. Some of them you want to be there because they're exaggerated and they just help the model pop. You just want to be semi-consistent, but remember, it is a toy. You want him to pop when someone picks him up and looks at him and goes, Man, it looks badass. So we're going to get the uh, casing on the top of his foot. Okay. Come down the other side here. There we go. Cool. Now we're going to get the uh, front kind of nose of his boot. We're going to focus on the uh, his front left side. We're going to do like a half crescent around the curvature of his boot here. There we go. And this is just kind of trying to focus where the light would be. Now the uh, under this, there's like the sole of his boot. We're going to catch the same crescent in about the same distance on that corner. And it was a little bit thick. You guys might not see it. I do. I'm just going to taper that off there a little bit. Cool. All right. So let's see here. All right. I'm going to flip him. You'll notice I flip the model around a lot to help me get angles and so forth. So he's upside down right now, but we're going to get this armor plate up on his hip. We're going to just drag the side of the brush down the edge of it. Hang on, let me turn this. Camera's going to shake, maybe. Oop, sorry. That's a little bit better for me. Let's see things. So dragging it down the side. There we go. Oop. And we don't want it on the underside, so we're not going to hit the full curvature. What we're going to do is catch the other part that's going straight. So right there. Flip them. Catch the back side here. Where the extreme highlight might be. Where the light might break through and glint. There we go. So there. These are really subtle. I'm not sure if the camera's even picking them up. I can see the color, but... This might be one of those, Hey, we're following the steps! I can see it in person. Gonna sip of my caffeine. Okay, come to the back of the model here, and we're just gonna grab the top behind his kneecap here. I'm gonna put a little line on the edge. There we go. And we're gonna put one down on the underside because there's another piece. We're not doing both sides of this uh, ravine, so to speak. We're doing the bottom side where the edge would be up towards the light. The um, edge above it would be down towards the ground, so the light is less likely to catch it that way. And we're going to catch the top of this piece here. And connect. Okay. Now we're going to come down, because what we're doing the highlights, there's a spot on the back of his uh, calf here, with these two little dots. We're going to highlight the bottom side right here where the light would ideally hit. you got to imagine the light being shined on it. And then the underside here, because the top side there is going to be... No, the light's not actually going to hit it that way. Okay, now we're going to flip them. 
This is where we're going to do a highlight that doesn't make as much sense, but looks good. And we're going to catch the um, underside of this uh, foot or leg pad here. So like I said, some of these highlights will make sense with the light. Other ones are just to exaggerate the model. This one is more of an exaggeration. And then there's a little plate under it. It's darker. We're going to catch the edge of that one. There we go. Cool. We're going to taper this one back just a smidge it. Now, let's see, he's got this plate up towards his hip, where his uh, little hip joint would be in this one. Let's get a little highlight on the edge of that. There we go. Let's come on the front side, do the same thing. And taper it down. Do, 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 do. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. And then, because this is a circle, Following like we did on the uh, calf thing, we're going to catch one side, not all sides, so we're going to go bottom left of this circle part of the armor. And there's a little circle dot above it, so we're just going to kind of dab in there, bottom left side. Boop, 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 boop. Just get a little hint of red in there. There we go. Oops, got a little too much. Get a brush wet. And just get the tip in there and kind of get that paint back out. Okay. You'll notice I'm kind of also working around where the wash still appears wet. We don't want to disturb that. I'm working a little bit faster on camera than I might in real life. And also if you had multiple models, while wash is drying, you're washing other models. So we're going to catch this plate up towards this hip where the um, joint armor mesh is. A little bit of a highlight. And if this was yours, you may not highlight all these spots. You may just highlight some of them. And you want to catch this little squared armor plate. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to get his butt plate. And we're just going to drag a line down next to his little pouches. Situate the hip area. Give him a little line. Boop. It's okay if you accidentally touch a pouch. We're going to repaint those later. Um, it's good practice to try to minimize that, but if you hit one, no big deal. We're going to use the edge of our paintbrush here. Taper his butt. This is an extreme highlight or exaggerated highlight that probably wouldn't exist, but it's going to help the model pop a little bit. There you go. And then we're going to come around the other side of his butt and drag the highlight in the same way, straight down the edge. And catch the hip part, so we're going to put a little line at the top. And now he's got a little square down here, so we're going to paint one edge of that. There we go. And now let's see. I promise you, when I take the final photos of this before I ship it to whoever the winner will be, you'll notice, uh, excuse me, more of these subtle highlights. So I always like to get the side of his little cod piece here. This exaggerated highlight where the light probably may not hit, but it looks good. It's going to make uh, more of the armor plates pop. I only do one side, so I usually do the model's left side and my right side. Curve it at the bottom. And we're going to come across the top as well. And try and taper the highlight and get it thin. Okay, you might be able to see that. Yeah, okay, at that angle, I think you can see some of the highlights on him. So some of it popping. You can see the one I just did on his cod piece a little bit. Okay, now we're going to come down the other leg now. Same process we were doing. We're going to get his um, armor plate up here near his hip. Just catching the edge. If you can use the side of your brush, that's what you want to use. Only use the tip if you need to. And now there's a line here where there's two plates coming together. We're going to get the underside where the light's going to hit and not the upper plate where the light would be reflecting over but not onto the edge. 
if that makes any sense. That line here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, come on, Pink. You can do it. You notice me shaking a little bit because I'm manhandling this guy, holding my breath, trying to get these highlights without screwing them up. Okay, so he's got this little spot on his um, thigh here, also protruding. We're going to highlight that. There we go. And then he's got his um, armor plate on top of his armor plate on his thigh here. We're going to highlight the top edge of that. Not the bottom edge because the light's not catching it. He's got a little line in it, so we're going to catch the underside here. You'll see it. There we go. On his little thigh plate. Now his uh, more hip plate thing, we're going to do like we did on the other side. Drag the paintbrush um, edge down the side of it, if we can get in there. Let's see. There we go, and then right there. Okay, and we're gonna taper the underside one real quick, just a smidget, just a little taper. Cool. All right, come around to the back. Same thing. Gonna take the edge of it, or the side of our uh, air or paintbrush, and get the edge of the plate right there. Bam. And let's go ahead and taper the top just a smidge. Just get a little bit of highlight across the back corner. Going up towards his uh, waist. Nice. And let's do the same thing on the other side because I missed that spot. There we go. Up towards the purity seal. There we go. Okay. Now it looks like we're going to be getting ready to start working on his bottom part of his leg here. Let's get the rest of his thigh plates, armor plate. Not sure what you call it, but that's what we're going with. And we'll taper that down a little bit. Okay, so now getting more paint, still doing the paints. Do, 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 do. And we're going to try and drag the edge of our paintbrush on the side of the plate here, on the edge of the plate. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Got a little bit more than it wants, so just wipe it off. Yep, well, I mean, I want to be a blood angel too, I guess, today, so i got to start by painting sometime. Uh, Bob, if you would like to enter, I'm not sure if you saw, but type in um, Why So Red, no spaces, spelled like you would normally spell it, and that'll enter you into the contest to win this model. And I swear to Buddha, if you somehow win both, um, you're going to be on a roll, because then you'll own two Premier's Marines, and you can just keep watching and start slowly building an army amassed of or <laughs> created from a bunch of different colors so we're going to taper this one in a slightly exaggerated way because this is the edge and come down a little bit right there nice and we'll do the top edge of the circle on his ankle there we go Ah, well, you know, he could still have loyalists on his computer desk protecting the, uh, computer. He needs my Primaris Marines. We're doing the top of the foot armor plate here. This is, again, one of those uh, highlights that's a little bit exaggerated because that was more on the underside, not the upper side. But we did it because it's going to give a little more emphasis to the plate, which is what we want. You just don't want to highlight everything, because then your model just pfft, looks like it's exaggerated too much, which, I mean, if you want that, that's fine, but, yeah. See, so what he needs is to, you know, enter the contest and start winning more of my Primaris Marines from the streams, and he can just build an army and call them traitors. So 
So we're doing what we did on the other foot here. We're catching the uh, model's front left side, our right side um, of his foot. Edges here. We're going to catch that coming down. There we go. Cool. And we're going to exaggerate the heel a little bit. We're going to bring down highlight right there. Or it might not actually be, but exaggerate just a smidgel digital. Let's catch this plate here. You'll notice I'm making my way up the model, not down, because I have a bad habit of putting my fingers on the models and rubbing paint off. So if I work down to up, or my fingers um, rest on the model at the top, I'm less likely to pull paint off. So we're going to exaggerate just a little bit above the foot here. There's a little square armor plate or inlet. So we're going to get that. There we go. And then the opposite side, which is down here. And drag it over just a little bit. And we're going to get the part above the uh, foot plate here and just drag it over a smidge. Taper it a little, don't want to exaggerate too much. Okay. Well, maybe she'll go up to be a gymnast or a special forces person. You never know. That's kind of like special forces meets gymna gymnastics. Uh, we're going to get the top part here tapering under the knee. And if you guys have noticed, tapering is my word of the day. I like the word for some reason right now. Just drag it a little bit, not all the way, and let it kind of taper off. Put your finger if you need to. Well, there you go. I don't know, when I was growing up, I used to watch uh, American, was it Gladiator or whatever, where they beat the crap of each other with those boffers. I'm getting under the knee pad. There's a little square thing here. So we're just highlighting that real fast. Yeah, poop poops is a funny word. I've seen it. I think American Ninja Warrior or whatever. Yeah. Isn't that where they do like the um, like the little obstacle course thing where they fall in water a lot and stuff? Let me get the top of the knee here. I think tapering is like my way of saying don't highlight the whole thing <laughs> well yeah I mean our fiancés and wives aren't watching the stream Bob so they don't see our dude hang out we're getting the top of the uh, knee pad here And we're going to try and get the back edge of it as well because it's got two edges, the front and the rear. Okay. Well, there's that. So let's work on his belt here. Let's work with the model. And get the top edge here. And drag down the side. We're not going to get the bottom of it because the light wouldn't hit there. Just top edge, side. Gonna have to take a quick stopping point for this to uh, mix this paint back up. Starting to thicken up on me. This is why a uh, wet palette is useful for that stuff. And we're going to catch the top of the buckle here. Do a little crescent across the top. Boop. A boop, boop, boop. All right, we're going to go across the other side of the buckle here. 
that side, and bam. I was getting ready to say Bob's your uncle, but there's a Bob in chat, and he's not my uncle, so. Give me a second while I uh, put a little water in this, and uh, we're going to mix a little bit more. Uh, yep, yep. That's why on basic commissions, edge highlighting is usually reserved for HQ models, not basic warriors. Let's get a drop of water in here. Mix up some more of the yellow and bright orangey red mix. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. A little bit more water, still thick. Boop. More water. And that looks better. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That is why Chaos Marines usually cost more than Loyalist Marines, because they have all the fiddly bits. Alright, so we're going to edge highlight this plate on the underside of his chest here. It's going to be slightly exaggerated, because it's on the underside, but we're going to do it anyway. So we're going to catch that, turn them, and we're going to try and use the edge of a brush to catch just the edge of this plate. There we go. Sweet. Whoops. Up a little bit high. Okay, I need like a crosshair on my desk and be like, don't move the model from this spot, dum dum. The streamers can't see it. Okay, so he's got little uh, vents on the underside of his chest here. This side's going to be a little bit easier to see, so we'll do this side first. I'm going to catch the bottom right side of each one of these. So, bottom right. And. Just scoop up just a little. Dun, dun, dun. And same thing on all three vents. So bottom. Drag it up. And there. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. If we can get in there. This one's going to be. This one's going to be a feat with the hand in the way. So this is going to be dragging down. Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get with that hand in the way. Okay. Now, again, a more exaggerated highlight in a spot that probably wouldn't have them. We're going to come across the, uh, the bottom of the chest here. Put a little highlight there. So like I said, some of these are practical, some of them are exaggerated. Yep, and imagine paying somebody to do high detail where they did the gold, washed the gold, and highlighted the gold in addition to edge highlighting the armor. Yep. Or even a Helldrake. There's only so much airbrush you can do on a Helldrake. You're still going to have to hand paint some of that. Alright, so we're going to get his, um, his little peck armor here. Five dollars might get me to buy a, a paint to do the edge highlighting with. So we just went around to the other peck plate, did the same thing. Side here, more towards his gorget or gorget, or however you say it, his neck armor, 
Just coming up the side. Connect. Yep. Oop, flip it. Come down this side from his little peck area. And drag it. Highlight up towards the neck. There we go. Bob's uncle. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to now edge highlight his neck. So we're going to flip him again upside down. Get some paint on our brush. And we're just going to use the side of the brush on the side of the gorget here. Okay. Okay. Nope. There we go. Get a little bit more paint on here. And we're going to get the... Uh, other side. So first let's do a little line right there. A little line right here. And then we're gonna... You want this to be thin because you still want some of the base color to be there. should be able to do his hand now. Okay, so what we're going to do with the hand, just like we did last week, we're going to catch the front corner and drag down. And this is going to be really nice looking because this is a dark red that was on his hand from the, uh, the shadows we put in. We're going to drag across the top. Connect, and then come across the back at the wrist. So when I'm talking about getting the tops of the armor plates and not the bottoms, this is what I'm talking about. It's easy to see. So on the wrist here, or his, excuse me, um, his hand here, I did the front, the top, and the back. I did not do the bottom edge because the light's going to hit, and you might even actually have highlights that uh, are a little extreme here for the light, but it's going to hit the top, taper down. The light's not going to hit the bottom surface that well. It's going to hit the top and glance over. So you focus your highlights on the top edge, not the bottom edge. And if you're going to edge highlight the bottom, the bottom needs to be a, a darker color than the top to keep the illusion of a shadow. So now we're going to edge highlight the wrist here. We're just going to come down the front half and the back half just a smidgel digital. There we go. And his little, um, I don't know, wrist thingy to bob. There we go. And get that to taper the way I want. There we go. We're gonna turn them a little bit here. It'll be easier to uh, catch this edge from this angle. You notice I was using my pinky kind of brace on this so I can do that. Um, if you just do like this in the air you, you, get, you can get shakes but brace on your hand or brace on the model and like right now I've got like two places braced so it depends on how you really do it but anything to steady your hand and still get at what you're trying to edge highlight will be helpful. Okay. Gonna come down the back side here Right here. Okay. I'm gonna hit the elbow. I'm gonna catch the top portion. Now the bottom of this one is um, something I usually highlight because it's exaggerating and it's an elbow. It helps the arm pop a little. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna highlight this side. Try and use the side of the brush. So my paint's coming off. Get a little more paint. Yeah, it might take a week or month. <laughs> uh, 
We're going to come down the uh, center of the uh, elbow pad here. Now, even on the old Marines that may have not had a defined line here, I still did this highlight and just put one in because it, it helps create some depth. And then the uh, elbow up towards under the shoulder where it would be more dark, right in here, I just leave that. No highlight. So we're back to the hand here. And we're going to paint a little bit on the backs of the fingers up towards the knuckle. The top knuckle. Just a little smidge to make the fingers pop. Like that. Now, we're going to catch the top portion of the fingers if we can. So I'm going to get a man grip here. We don't want to shake. It's a bad place to shake. Catch the top edge of the finger. I'm going to try and leave a little bit of the bottom edge still dark. It's going to create some depth. Now, the other knuckle, same thing. Get some pink here. We're just going to put a little dab on the knuckle. You don't want to just drag this and get it into the recesses. You just want to tap the knuckle a little bit and make sure the recess stays dark, which I screwed up there because I wasn't paying attention. Now, let's get that paint back out. There we go. Anyway, because um, you want the uh, highlights to emphasize the high points, but the high points being emphasized is going to make the shadows pop too. So we get the knuckle right here. And we're going to drag just a little bit of a line on the fingers. Okay. And we're almost done with this hand. Whee! And this one, we're going to just drag the top and get to the tip of the finger. Now the thumb, get the top of the knuckle there, top of the knuckle there, get a line on it, okay. Okay. I'm going to come in here up towards his uh, wrist, uh, wrist, excuse me, um, elbow, and where the mesh would be, I'm going to edge highlight the side of that plate. The underside down here where the elbow um, plate actually is, we're going to put a little line right here where the light might be catching a hint of it. Now his um, forearm plate, it's got two pieces that clamp. We're going to highlight the underside here where the light would hit since it's going to flow over the upper one. Like that. Catch the wrist plate or the wrist uh, dealio. And now he's got a plate up here in his armpit we're going to try and get a little hint on. Awesome. And I gotta take a sip of my caffeine. Alright, let's move over to the other hand. Or arm. And same thing. This time, the uh, side that we don't highlight is gonna be slightly different because he's at a different angle. So we're gonna be doing a uh, highlight across the top of the, the hand here. and across the front. And then a little taper at the bottom. Just a littlest hint. As Rob Ross would say, two, hair, two hairs and some air. That highlight was not quite as exaggerated because he's uh, up at a different angle and also on the other one we didn't paint, paint the bottom of the palm or hand. Um, we painted um, the back, the top, and the front. Well this one because this hand's up the top, the front, and the bottom would get it, but not this side here. So, just always pay attention to try and imagine where the light's coming from in relation to your model's position. So we're going to do the backs of the knuckles here. Catch a little line. I don't know if you guys even hear that when I do it. I make like little laser noises. I'm like, pew, pew, doo, doo. It helps you paint better, I promise. Make sound effects when you paint next time. When you paint the bolt gun, make bullet noises go so long as it doesn't uh, make you uh, do jerky motions. Don't don't sue me if you mess up painting. It's not my fault. Alright, so we're getting his little fingers here. Get the knuckles. Okay. Catch his thumb. Edges, knuckles, the back line right there. Cool. And we're going to catch the wrist here. 
top part, not the bottom, because it's not going to be hit by the light here, so just the top edge. There we go. He's coming together quite nicely, quite nicely. While we're in here, he's got his um, forearm arm plate. It's got a little bit of a square dibble in here, so we're going to get the bottom side with a highlight. And like I said before, I spend a lot of time working on these highlights. You don't have to. You could just do some of the high points, make them look good, get them on the table. But if you're going for higher detail, higher quality, this is what you got to do. So we're catching up here by his uh, armpit just a little bit. Yeah, we're going to come down here and get his elbow. So we're going to try and connect these and make it look cohesive. A little bit thick on that, so let's wipe it. Wipe it off again. We're going to try the uh, edge of the brush technique here. See if we can get that to go on. He's got a nice defined line there. Yeah. It's a crisp armor plate. The edge of the uh, paintbrush highlight method only really works if there's a protruding part of the model, a hard edge to get it to. But always be on the lookout for working uh, smarter, not harder. And if you lay your... Um, uh, paper towel on your leg and wipe your paintbrush on it. Always make sure the paper towel is there so you don't wipe paint on your shorts. Not going to say that I just did that, but that might have potentially happened. So we're going to take the top edge of the elbow here. We're going to drag down just a taper on the back because it's going to, light source will fade away down there. Didn't taper quite as dark as I wanted, so we can come back in for a little bit more. There we go. And taper down the uh, center of the elbow here. It's just not all have to connect all the way, so you're gonna want to kind of drag it to a thin point and let it taper away. Okay, flip it and come over here and do the same thing. So ended up actually connecting, almost connecting, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, so let's see. I guess we've got his helmet and his backpack left. Let's uh, let's get that helmet. So from right now, most of our light source has been coming kind of from the top and the left. So we're gonna catch the top of his helmet here. You can use the side of the paintbrush on part of that. Just want a crisp line. Okay. Now we're going to uh, drag this this way towards where the light is. Come down the, the back of the helmet and try and connect it. We're going to taper the other side a little bit, but not as much. It's not going to go all the way down, just a little bit over here. Going to get the uh, upper or upside of his little ear plate thing here, the edge. The back of his helmet down here is a hard edge. We're going to catch that. Bam. And we'll catch that over here too. What the hell? His helmet's gonna pop. That'd be great. Okay, now the front, we're gonna catch the f upper side of his visor and put a line right above his eyes. Right on the edge. Okay. Turn him. On his visor. Do, 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 do. go. The underside of his eyes socket. We're going to try and put a highlight here because this would catch the light. Sometimes you'll see people put the color of the lens glow here as well, which you could do if you wanted to. Okay. 
And now we're going to put a line down his nose. Because this is a, a bridge of his nose that's going to be a high point. So, here we go. There you go. And that'll kind of connect to the uh, lower eye socket uh, things we did. And it also looks like there's a little spot where this tubes on this um, ear plates connect. We'll put a little highlight right there. And we'll come over here and get this uh, little ear thing too. All right, now we've got his backpack to do. So, all right, so you can see now, like, it's got a dark to a light transition. So these highlights are going to be more visible on the darker parts, and a little more subtle on the lighter parts, but it's going to really pull them together. So we're going to catch the edges of his little vents here. Again, top edges, not the bottom one. And we're going to catch the top edge here. That edge. There we go. Now we're going to come to the other side, do the same thing. And, uh, turn the model so you can get the edge of your brush on it. Well, this way, sorry. See what happens when you're not paying attention? And the edge, do, 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 come down. Okay. Other edge. Okay. Now we're just going to connect back to the uh, backpack right here on this top edge. Top edge. And this one here. Alright. Now there's two little vent slits here. We're going to go to the bottom left and catch a little bit of the circle curvature. And then highlight the bottom. So bottom left, highlight the bottom. And same thing on that side. If we can actually get the paint in there. Thought you were teaching us to paint. How can you not get paint in where it needs to go? There we go. And the side of the backpack here has got some uh, plates that have hard edges. So we're going to catch that right here. He's got these little circle things here. And try and catch the top and slightest edge of that. Okay. You notice I clean my brush a lot. Don't want paint drying in it if we can help it. So there's a hard edge right here next to this little circle thing, so we're going to catch that. And you're going to notice that this hard edge hits a point and then it tapers. So we're going to just Catch the littlest bit with the no amount of paint, apparently. And we're going to try and bring that highlight down. We want a real thin line. So he's slightly canted, the model's leaning a little bit, so light might catch the side. Not going to catch as much on that side. Okay. Come over to the other side, we're going to mimic some of the other highlights. So we're going to catch this edge of the armor plate deal top portion of the circle and then that edge. We're going to stop at the point though so that the uh, this edge is exaggerated and that one's not. We still want to have the highlights coming in and emphasizing light. And I feel like more light, whoops, sorry, shaky, more lights coming this way than that way so we want more highlights on that side. Now we're going to catch his little circle thing on his backpack and catch the underside of that little Dibble. Drag down just the littlest hair. Okay. We're going to take the top side. Now we're going to get the underside of the little uh, curvature. And we're just kind of working our way around the model here. Just 
just a little bit of a hint on this underside there. Boop. You want to make sure you get that highlight good on the top because that's where the light is going to hit the most. So I'm going back through and making sure that line is nice and bright. Okay. Now we're going to use the side of our paintbrush to catch part of the exhaust here. So turn them upside down. Edge of the paintbrush, we're going to make a little bit of a crescent type uh, motion, half circle across the top of the exhaust. We don't, we're not doing the whole thing, just a little hint across the top. And then on this side. There we go. Now, we are going to get some of the underside here, but we're going to try and get inside and do a partial crescent on the bottom. Where the light might actually be hitting because the way is canted. So we're going to go in on the inside and do a little bit of a circle right at the bottom. We'll have crescent type thing. Little moon. That's no moon. Like that. There we go. Okay. We're going to come up and let's see. So he's got these little vents on the back. So like we do the other ones, we're going to catch the um, left side and bottom corner. So, bottom corner, left side, left side, bottom corner. Ooh, ooh, got some in the crack, which we don't want. We want to keep that crack dark. Make sure the bottom of the dip's got that right in it. Yep. Leroy Jenkins. That's funny because he says at least I have chicken. And here in just a second, I'm going to run to the other room and grab my white paint that I forgot and a couple chicken nuggets. So we're going to catch these little top plates. We're going to do the front his left side, like a little L. Left and top. Okay. What's up, Nord? Nord, if you are interested in winning a painted miniature, type in Y so red, all one word, spelled the way you would spell that, and you'll be entered. And if you win, I'll ship you a model, buddy. Or this one I'm working on, rather. If you're interested in owning one, if you're not, that is up to you. So we're going to get this bottom line on the back here, under these vents. This is going to be, I'm going to have to manhandle the crap out of them because this is going to be a straight line as best I can. So you're getting a good grip. Cool. And we're going to come up the, uh, the side over here, matching the way we did the vents. So the left side. Now let's taper the sides of the back here. So we're going to use the side of the brush, come up the side of the backpack right here. Okay. Same thing on this side, side of the paintbrush. Now, there is a uh, line that we're going to try and get on the front of this as well. I'm going to have to grip him, and we're going to try and get this in there without screwing anything up. So we're going to get right here. Try and taper that back. Ooh, didn't have enough paint. You can do it, paintbrush. I have faith in you. Okay, and we catch that side. Cool. 
And now, we left this gun casing red on the top. We're going to edge highlight that. It's the last piece. So here we go. We're going to catch the top. And this bottom portion here. Might be able to get away with the side of the paintbrush edge highlight technique. Let's try. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys are always Sony fans, but that's what I think of. Oh yeah. Have to come into a little bit of wash to accentuate spot. Okay, let's come around. And we're going to use the edge here. And actually, this guy's got an Aquila on the side of his gun, too, so I'm going to grab my silver paint and do some cool stuff. Uh, you did it right, buddy. You should be entered. I use a little bot thing for Twitch, and I, I make the keyword. It's not case sensitive. You just have to type it properly, and it looks like you did it right. So, I think you're good, man. May the odds be ever in your favor. And we'll come across the top here. And we're going to exaggerate this gun a little bit. We're going to actually do a highlight on the underside on that. And I think we are just about done with the red stuff. Yay! It's a miracle! Yeah, um... Nathan, you might know Nord. He's been in a bunch of my live streams. Um, actually, I met him on Twitch, and I've actually played some Warships games with him. And I actually think he's been in Discord with me, too. Anyway, let's kind of show you guys where we're at so far. Cool. So, I'm going to take a really, really quick step away from the camera. I have to go grab my silver and white paint. Um, let me pan this real quick. I'm going to show you guys. I have a pile of paint here. This is what I'm working with to do all the stuff I'm trying to do. So, the fact that I managed to miss two of them, I think you'll understand. Because I have a lot of paint laying there. So, anyway, let me tighten the camera back up real quick. Anyway, I'm going to put him up here so you guys can look at him. And adjust my camera again because it's sideways. There we go. And I'm going to grab my paints real quick. Be right back in like less than a minute, hopefully. Let me grab him. Be right back. Alright, so, fun fact, I may or may not be a moron, um, one of the paints I was looking for, 
I'm stumbling around like a dummy, and I'm pretty sure it's actually in here. Maybe, maybe I'm just an idiot. I can't see it. So I was looking for this. I was looking for my white paint. White paint's in here the whole time. But went and got my silver, which was good too. All right. So this next step, we're gonna try and do, and hopefully not screw up. We're gonna try and make him like a veteran. We just try and do some laurels on his um, helmet. Hopefully, I did not butcher the name. Okay. So let's see. Spot where the paint's not wet. Cool. So we're gonna get some white down. Then we're gonna try and paint these, make him look like he's slightly Roman. Now this is just um, model color white. Now be careful when you thin down white on your palette and what paintbrush you use because you don't want a paintbrush that's got a little hint of color left in it. It'll ruin your white. Then you have to make another batch. Especially when you're working with red. So that is a very very contrasting color to white. Okay. Woo! This is going to be some uh, two hairs and some air moment here, guys. Now, this is not the easiest thing to do, but we're going to try. Get us some white paint here. And we're going to try and put a very, very thin line in a... Uh, um, slightly curved motion across his helmet towards the front. We start in the back here. You want it to taper. You want it to be a little bit thicker in the back. Get thin towards the front. Like that. We're going to come across the other side and because this is a free hand, these are not going to be perfect and they may not line up exactly the same, but your opponents will appreciate it if you do something like this on your sergeants, I promise. Slightly thicker to the back. And taper at the front. Ooh, ooh. I picked up my paintbrush too soon. Okay, so let's. Ugh, ugh. My line's not perfect. Hang on. My OCD's showing. So give me one second, guys. I'm going to tidy this up. This part is going to be slightly annoying. So I'm OCD, so I want these to be as close and crisp as possible. Okay, awesome. So we got our two white lines. Now we're going to fill in by kind of putting a little dab and a drag sort of motion. It's hard to explain, but once you see it and then do it. So we're going to get one right at the front here, and we're going to kind of touch where we did this. And do a little dab. And pull. So you're wanting to create the leaves. So a little, little dab and a pull. Yeah, it's about as close as that's gonna get. Try and tidy that up so they look about the same. Yeah, it's pretty close. And now you're gonna do the same type of motion down each side of the laurel, but you're gonna want to try and do the same number if you can, so that this does not look stupid. So, we're going to come down the back here. I'm just going to do little, little dibble dibbles. There we go. And we're going to come across the top and do the same thing. There we go. The veteran status. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is where we want to try and match the number. So it looks like we got six on the bottom, four on the top. I don't know if we can get a little extra one on the top. Yeah, we're going to get a real thin one on the top. We'll do six and five. Just a little, little dot. Come on. There we go. Cool. So six and five. Much gooder, much gooder. 
Alright, so let's see what we can do on this other side. Let's tidy up the front one just a smidge. Alright. Whew! Hold your breath. Don't shake. Alright, here we go. So six and five. And he's got this gun in his way, so it's hard for my eyes to focus. Let's do... Whoa, yep, yep. Hang on. Damage control. The uh, the gun is uh, giving me a hard time focusing my eyeballs, so let's see if we can get the top side done real quick. So we need five. This one might get more. There we go. It's a little bit harder to get in on this side than it is the other side. Damn you, gun! Your bolt gun's too big, sir. Your bolt gun's too big. Let's see if I can get in here. Yeah, I think this laurel is just going to have more than the other one. I think that's what's going to happen to make it look proper. So hang on, we're going to get in here and we're going to try and dab. There we go. Cool. So not perfect, but not terrible. Veteran status. And here's what's about to happen. I'm about to eat chicken nugget. Alright, let's get some black paint going. Where are you at, black paint? Mmm. I think my black paint is on my desk behind me. Let me turn around and grab it. Of course, I left that paint laying on the wrong desk too, but I got it. So, next thing we're going to do, while I nom on some chicken nuggets, turn our palette, get us some black paint in here. Actually, I want to give us a better shape than what I just did. Hang on. This is a new bottle, so give it a good shape. Now we're going to be painting the parts of the model that are going to be black. Couple drops of water. <laughs> Think that's going to be good. Okay. Cool. You guys might actually want to see the model while I'm mixing paint, huh? You can see the top of them. Hello. So, we're going to do a shoulder borders. And if the black's too thin, we'll just do two coats. I'm going to try not to hit the red stuff. And we're going to keep working this till we get it crisp and tidy. I'm just doing real thin working towards the yellow because I don't want to screw the yellow up. Okay, come on, come on, come on. We want a matching crisp line. There we go.
Come down the back back here. Get the inside next to his uh, chest plate. That nice and blacked out. And like I said before, you'll notice me flipping this model around, going at different angles and such. Here's the bottom side here. I'm trying to get right up next to the yellow without having too much black touch it. Just a hint. Get the underside here, right next to the elbow. It's crisp. The underside on the other side of the uh, arm here. Try not to touch. Yeah, it looks like we hit the yellow a little bit where we didn't, so I'm going to try and do a little damage control and even that out just a smidge. And let's connect them right there at the point. Yep. Cool. So we got our first black shoulder pad done. Or bo shoulder border rack. And we're going to come do the other one. So since we're over here, we can get the underside of it first. Yeah. And some of these are a little bit easier to do not being on the model, but the shoulder pads for this don't come in pieces, so you're kind of stuck with what you get. So we're going to get the underside next to the elbow. And get see if we can get this side smoothed up. Trying to get real close. Go. And we're going to come down the back side. Trying to get right up next to the yellow. Okay, we're going to flip them. We're going to get the top now. We'll try and get down there behind the backpack without touching anything. Looks like we did. Sweet. Come up to the gun. It's okay if you touch part of the gun. Just try not to touch the red casing that we've already worked hard to paint. Okay. And we're try and get the edge here and I'll fix the other side in a second. Yep. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, 
And then we're going to get in there and we're going to get up next to his um, collar. Probably good. Okay, so black shoulder borders complete. Or at least that part of it. Now we're going to put the um, black portions on the gun. So that, I'm going to switch to my um, less favorite paintbrush. Now we're going to try again and not to hit the um, red parts of the casing. It's okay if you hit the non-red parts, because they're going to be silver later anyway. But don't hit the red. That's not what we want to happen. There's a little spot next to the casing I'm trying to get without touching. It's being a little uncooperative. There we go. I hit the casing just the lightest hair. Let's see if I can get that smoothed off. Hey, I'm going to try and do a little scrape here. No, nope. Alright, well, hopefully the wash will do it. Alright, so now we're going to paint his little uh, rangefinder thingy black. Just trying to not hit his fingers, of course. You want to be smooth so you don't want it to pull up too much paint. You also don't want to have brush strokes. Kind of thin your strokes out. Thin the layers out. This is also why we thin our paints. Don't want brush strokes. Don't want thick paint. Make sure you get this whole thing. You don't want red peeking through this black. Yeah, I think we've got just about everything on it. 
Look smooth. Do one more pass on the underside. Nope. Nice. Okay. So, looks like pretty much good on the black. For now. So we're moving on to the silver. I'm gonna set this down for just a second. Grab some or not silver, excuse me, uh, gray. Okay. For that, we're just gonna be using some downstone gray. Give it a good shake. And we're gonna get some off here with our paintbrush. Should be enough. Place that soon. Yeah, get two drops of water, so if it's too thin, you'll know. Once you start using it, you'll have to add a little bit more paint, but it should be okay. And just work that water into your pool here. Your pool of paint. Your paint pool. You don't want to really touch the black that's wet over there because you don't want it to mix. And what we're going to be doing here is highlighting the black parts of the model. Now, Last week we did a dry brush of the black, this week we're going to highlight it. So you guys can learn something new and see how it looks. And it's currently a tragedy. Mama's fat chicken nuggets. So let's do the gun casing um, portion first. So we're going to be catching the top side where the light would hit, so this edge. Okay. And the edge near the red. The light's going to catch there, so we're going to just bring it down and across the top here. Careful to not touch the red stuff, we don't want that. We're not going to do the underside back towards the magazine because the light's not going to hit it there. Now we're going to come down because there's an edge here. We come down this edge. And just do lines like this. And to exaggerate the model, we're going to do it on the next edge, too. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to come down for the slightly more tricky part in just a second. It's not looking quite the way I want it, so we're fixing it. Okay. So now we're going to come in. We're going to try and catch this portion right here in each one of these crevices on the side. Connect them. Go to the other side, flip them over, and do the same thing. So I'll start with the top, try not to touch the casing. And we're going to come across this spot here. Do, 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 do. down the upraised edges here. And then on the little crevice thing we did on the other one. There you go, just like that. Okay. 
and we're going to be washing that so that gray is going to be subdued a little bit shortly. So we're going to come over to this thing. Let me catch that. Should we be able to use maybe the side of the brush for this? Nice. And if you screw up this part, you can always come back with a little bit of your black and touch it up. No big deal. Yeah, we're just trying to make this little, I don't know, handheld GPS or whatever the heck it is. Yeah, let's try to make a pop. Alright, so let's come down this side here. Not quite enough silver. Not silver. Woo! Gray. the side of it for this. Yep. Yep. And you can see where you have a little bit more control with what you're doing with your edge highlights on this, but the dry brush is much, much faster. So it depends on what quality of detail you're going for and how long you want to work on your model. Personally, I think for most people, the dry brush method's probably the quickest and most efficient. But now I'm going to come around and do the other side of this. I'm just going to catch some edges here. And the bottom side of the view screen has got some upraised portions, so we're going to highlight that. And we'll do his little antennas in like silver or something later. That's probably why I kept having a little Freudian, the Freudian slip there. Saying what I'm thinking, not what I'm saying, or something like that. Whatever it means. You guys know what I'm saying. Right here, I'm just kind of reworking one of the edge. Woo! Too much. Way to screw up, Justin. You're supposed to be a professional. I'll just come back in with some black. Tidy that up. Tidy, 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 tidy. There we go. No big deal. All fixed. All right. Now for the slightly tricky part, we're gonna be edge highlighting the shoulder pads. And it's gonna be a little painstaking. I'm gonna get the easy part of the way. We're gonna use the side of the paintbrush. Drag it across the side of the shoulder pad right here. Try not to touch any of the red parts of the model with this. Okay. Take it easy, Bob. I will catch you later. Thank you for stopping by before work. That's a little bit thin as silver, or gray.
Okay. So we're gonna be catching um, these uh, undersides and stuff are a little exaggerated because we want him to pop. We're coming in with another gray here shortly. That's gonna make the uh, this current gray look a lot darker, even though it's pretty light in contrast. Okay. Now for the slightly more complicated highlight here, or time consuming, can catch the inside. Try to be very steady. Sometimes easier said than done. Like I said, if this isn't super tidy, you can just come back in with a little bit of black, touch it up, which is what we're going to do. One of the benefits of having a palette with your colors out that you're in the process of using, get what you need to tidy up. Okay. And this other side, same thing. Just going to use a little bit of gray across the upper portion of the shoulder pad. Tidy that up just a little bit. This on the underside where the black is, and this highlight would not be as extreme. So let's just tidy that up a smidge. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same process. The same process. So let's get the uh, uh, side of the brush highlights done. And we'll move on to the hard stuff. Just trying to use the side to catch the high points here. Okay, I'm gonna tidy that silver up a little bit with black. Went on just a smidge too thick for my liking. Well, let's just come back in and tighten that up just a little bit. There we go, nice. That's one nice crisp lines we're trying to get with that gray. Now we're going to come in and do one across the top. Here's helmet. I'm just going to drag that and get the edge. Okay, now we're going to come in and do the edge highlight by hand on the inner edge here. As I hold my breath and paint these. Ugh. Paint's giving me a little bit of trouble here. If we can get it to. We'll come back and tie this up in just a second with the black with the black and we're gonna catch this edge now right, use a little 
blackmail. Tidy up where that line went of awry. And we'll tidy up the top portion here. Have to look crisp, 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 crisp. Okay. The shoulder edge highlights can be a little, a bit of a pain. Just a little. All right. So there, we've got our little shoulder highlights. We're going to do a second stage here, just add a little more emphasis. And for that, we are going to use, I think this is uh, Administratum Gray. You won't need a whole lot of this, just a little bit should be good enough. This is for more of the extreme highlight. Put that down. And get a little drop of water. Boop. And mix this up. Didn't mix up a whole lot because we won't need a huge amount. And this is like a second stage highlight. If you're going to do two, you need one slightly brighter than the first. So while the shoulders are still drying, we're just going to catch some of the high points on the grip here. Just a smidge right down. Kind of like highlighting a highlight here. You're creating another bit of depth. You catch, whoops, wrong gray. I'm going to catch just a hint of the top here. Try and taper that. There we go. Same thing on this side. Just come around. Dun, 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 dun. And taper just a little across the top. And still having some of the other gray exposed. Cool. And same thing on this little little weapon here. All right, weapon uh, GPS. The high high point, so little spot there. Okay. And the top here. You notice I'm not high re highlighting everything, I'm just trying to catch the more extreme spots. And don't worry, we're gonna we're going to subdue this at a later step. These grays are going to be a little bit more dull, so they won't be quite as bright. We don't want super bright gray. Okay, there we go. And we're coming on the other side and catch top edge. the littlest corner on the bottom side. Okay. And then same thing on the other portion. Littlest hit right here in the corner. Woo! That was not little. That went on with a lot. So I'm going to smooth that down. That's fine. Quite serendipitous. Serendipitous, just a little bit on the corner. A little bit on that corner. There we go. And now we're going to catch the high points on the shoulder pads. Now we're not going to do the undersides with this. We're going to just do the uppers. So the spot where the highlight would be more extreme. Do a little bit of a gray line. Doesn't have to be the whole thing, just a little bit. Create and depth. Same thing on this side. Highlight's probably going to catch right around there. So, there we go. 
And that's just going to give a little bit more emphasis to your uh, highlighting. Um, it's the the kit that comes with the um, three Reavers and three uh, Primaris. I forget what it's called, but I think you got it right. The two-player one, that's the $40, I believe, that has the um, Nurglings and then a couple of Nurgle Plague Marines and then the six Space Marines. This side's going to be a little bit different because the edge is upwards, so we're going to highlight edge of the paintbrush here ever so slightly right here. Yeah, it's not from the, um, the big one, I know that, but yeah. Catch right here. And we're going to get our black and touch that up because it didn't go quite as straight as I wanted. There we go. And let's fix up the little spot I see down there. Cool. And you can see if you're OCD, you could spend a lot of time working and reworking spots if you don't get things perfect. top huh I thought they were the exact same models or just a couple of the same models I didn't realize they were different interesting I'm gonna catch a little bit of the inside right here I didn't know that. I don't have the Dark Imperium yet because I don't have lots of money right now. So, I got this one and it's for live streaming. I haven't even bought any Premier's Marines for myself. So, it's on my, um, on my, um, Twitch page. I have a donation thing and I actually have the Dark Imperium set listed because I have not been able to afford to get it yet. I could have skipped the live stream models and saved money, but I was more interested in teaching people than just catering to my own desires to have models. And that's tough, because I really wanted some models. They look cool. And it's funny, because, you know, the first Primaris Marine I painted, well, first Reaver I painted, I gave away. And the first Primaris I've painted, I'm also giving away, so have not even painted any for myself but it happens nice I'm not sure how to pronounce your name Minsk J12 I hope I got that right um, what kind of airbrush should you go with? Badger or Iwata? And I'll tell you what, man. If you're starting off painting and you're already getting an airbrush, you are ahead of the game. Um, I've been playing Warhammer 40k since 2010. And I got um, into commission painting in 2012. Oh, man. Yeah, buddy. This right here. The Golden Child. Anyway. Uh, that is the way you do it. Um, yeah, agreed. You can definitely make them look cool. Um, anyway, you are, uh, you are ahead of the game. If you are starting out minis just now, and you're already getting airbrush, and you're going to start with airbrush, that's great. Um, like I was saying, I started in 2010, started commission painting in 2012, and my first few commissions I did by hand with basically no airbrush. They took me forever. Now, my commissions now still take me forever. Um, but they would have taken forever plus 10, you know, uh, without the airbrush. So just just being able to base coat this red alone 
saves you time. I mean, before I was hand painting all of them. So I, my first project was um, Ayandin Eldar, if I said that right, the orange ones. <laughs> I had to hand paint all of them, even their vehicles, hand paint them orange. That was terrible. Now I can do in a couple hours what was taking me weeks, you know. So it, it even just for base coding, you're ahead of the game. Oh man, Pyretic, it is, you don't have to have one, but um, I think, like I said, I was against it, but once I got one, the time I saved on base coating alone, even like, if you aren't doing like a two or three stage um, base coat, just priming the models or basing them saves money and time in the long run. Like, you know, if someone was like, I want to paint my whole army blue, go buy a $100 airbrush and a compressor, you know, that's 200 bucks or something, that's a lot up front, but you got to think $20 cans of primer from GW or $3 ones from, you know, the store over time and then hand painting and whatever the airbrush pays for itself so the initial investment for me was a little expensive but after that I mean I'm fifth year commission painting now like if if I had to go back and never use an airbrush again I'd quit uh, fun fact if you don't know or you're not familiar uh, I wish I got paid for some of these shout outs uh, check out armypainter.com um, they have a lot of color primers they're comparably priced to GW and almost identical color ranges, and they've got paints to match them too, uh, and they have a quick uh, paint process. If you've never seen the quick shade stuff, super good, and the prices are comparable and good, good stuff. So if you've never checked them out, I would. Yeah, uh, humidity can play a major role with uh, with your models, and that's another thing about uh, airbrushing. You can do it inside, get you um, a ventilator or a vent or whatever, and um, you know, you don't have to worry about humidity as much. Yep, yes, they do. And they're very high pigment. Um, and they're comparably priced to GW, so. I have not used a lot of their paints, but I have heard their washes are amazing. Now, I like Citadel paints. I like their washes. I wish they put their paints in freaking dropper bottles. Um, but I really do, uh, I really do like their paints and I like their washes. But I've heard really good things about the other stuff. Oh man, Whew. I am jealous. I think I've got the Army Painter Mega Set on my wish list too. <laughs> oh yeah, see, I'm using a small room for my airbrush. Um, it actually doesn't take up that much. I've got a, um, I think it's a Sparmax 2000 from um, Hobby Lobby, and that was a lot of uh, silver paint it needed all, but it's it was um, not mixing very well. Uh, for this next step, before I start yak, I'm using natural steel. Anyway, um, I'm not using a, a lot of space, and I'm using the uh, Sparmax 2000, I think, from Hobby Lobby. I used a 40% off coupon to buy it, got a good deal, and it's a two-stage, two-piston compressor, so you don't have to have a tank, um, and it works just well. I mean, I've done thousands of miniatures at this point with this thing, and it's still, it's still going. And for you guys who don't do commissions, it should last you probably just about forever, to be honest. I'm going to put a little bit of water in this silver and mix it up so it's not too thick. And like you guessed, we're, probably, we're going to be working on our silver parts of the model now. Yeah, I mean, um, you can use Mephiston Red and then drop washes over it, yeah. But you gotta think, um, four rattle cans from GW cost what this cost, and I'm using Angelic Blood for my base. This is like three dollars, four dollars, I think. And you could probably prime a small army with this. Like two of these would probably do 50 Marines plus like six tanks or more stuff, depending on how well you do with the airbrush. So, um, and then your compressor. It just depends on what you're doing. Let's start getting some silver parts painted here. And we're going to paint this little ring right here. And you guys might not see, I'm keep kind of going over because I'm thinning this out. It went on just a little 
a little thick, so I'm just making sure it's not coagulating up. Yeah, my hobby space is all over the house. <laughs> I paint in the living room and I paint in this room. Um, I don't have a computer in here except for the Mac, um, but I watch Netflix on my Xbox, and that's what gets me through painting. So now we're painting the uh, little antennas on this little thing. I'm going to add a little bit more water that's coming out a little thick for what I like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, that should have done it. Let's get in here and do his little joints. Let's bring it down here and do his behind his knee. Just like we did last week with our previous marine, the Riva. Putting some silver in here. You can do these joints black or gray or whatever. I always like silver with a wash over it because I always imagine their joints having a metallic mesh that provides more protection than like a rubber. You know? So, that's why I do silver. It's year 40,000, you'd think they'd have some kind of flexible metallic material. Looks like I got this a little bit thin this time. Can't, couldn't quite get my stuff right. That bottle of silver is a little old, so I'm going to have to get a new one. Paint came out a little bit thick and wasn't mixed very well even after the shake. Get his little butt. Paint your butt, Marine. Paint your butt. I'm going to go ahead and get this grenade. Come hither, grenade, or whatever you are. It's okay if you touch the pouch, because we're going to come back and paint that brown later. Just try not to touch the red. And like I said, uh, you guys might not be able to see, but if I keep going over the same spot, I'm kind of like moving the paint around and thinning it a little bit so it's not pulling up or too thick or whatever. Okay. Let's get his other joint behind his left knee. Some of the red showing through the grenade, sorry. It's gonna bother me. There we go. Okay, let's make sure we get in here. Do, 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 all the way around. And we're going to come up and try and get in here and get his hip area. Be careful on this one because it's a very tight spot.
Let's touch the red a little bit. Hang on. Damage control. I'm just using my uh, paintbrush when it's wet with no paint on it. I was rubbing the uh, silver back off. I would have done it on camera, but I needed to be quick so it didn't dry on the model. Sorry about that. You guys can learn from my mistakes live. Alright. Moving around here. Gonna get this hip. And for those of you guys who don't know, this is my favorite paintbrush. It is falling apart. It is a Winsor & Newton Series 7 size 0, I believe. It is my favorite brush. I've painted thousands of minis with it, and it is on its last leg. But I have the new one laying in a box brand new and have not opened it because I'm sentimental and I don't want to open it till this one's dead. It is my favorite. I love it. It's been with me through a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. The new te pe the texture paints are good. So it looks like that uh, hip joint there we can't quite see. We can see a little bit of his um, armpit. So let's get in there and just get a little touch of silver. And there we go. I touched the red a little bit, so a little damage control. Got my paintbrush wet. Just wipe off the excess paint. Boop. I'm going to get in here and get to his uh, elbow joint. Very, very light amount of paint. Tip of the brush. I'm just going to drag it across. Okay. Do one more pass because I didn't go on as thick as I wanted. There we go. Cool. And it looks like we can see a little bit of this guy's armpit joint. And a lot of these are details you guys might just overlook because they're, you know, things that you can barely see or whatever, but if this was a captain or something, you might want to spend an extra time to make him look spiffy. After all, he's going to spend more time on the table probably than his brethren, who will die so that he lives. Okay, now we're going to flip his gun up. Whoop! And he's got a little tube on the side of his helmet here that we're going to try and get. Actually, you know what? Yeah. I think we're going to do the ear joint silver as well. So let's get... Let's get this silver. And... I wasn't planning on doing that silver, but I think it's going to look good. It's going to look like his helmet's clamped over. That. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Silver, we don't want it. Silver, we don't want it. Damage control. Damage control. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Anyway, um, it's going to make it look like his helmet's clamped on top of a metallic underside, and I think that's going to look good. So we're rolling with it. Off the cuff. You'd think I had a picture reference up on my desk. I don't. I'm just kind of going with whatever I think looks good. Okay. I think that was a good choice. I'm going to come to the other side. This is going to be tricky, and because of the way his helmet is on here, we might not be able to get in there as easily or get all of it. So we'll do our best. We got it about as good as we're gonna get it. And forgive me, you might hear the painting pooch yelling or barking at something. She's very protective. Okay, now we're gonna come in and we're gonna do one more pass on the back of these joints. Some of them that still look a little thin. That one looked a little bit thin. Doo -doo -doo. And now the next uh, thing I'm going to paint is the gun, which is going to stink because it's what I've been propping my finger on. And you'll be able to see, I was talking about earlier, trying not to rub paint off. And you'll see the tip 
or I've rubbed all the paint off by spinning it. So I'm going to have to start being a lot more careful with what I'm doing. But looks good so far. So, let's start with the gun. Try not to get it on the red or the black. It's going on a little thin. That's okay. Might have to make another pass. Don't worry about it. Get in here above his hand under the red casing. Oh, um, sorry, Pyretic. I've got a mod thing on here to stop any like spam. Um, what were you trying to share, buddy? Was it uh, like a picture of a model? Give me one second. Hang on. Let's just bottle down for a minute. Oops. Yeah, hang on. One second, buddy. Uh, I think I remember this. If this doesn't work, I'm going to sound really stupid. There you go. Okay, let's see what you got here. Oh, that's cool. What is that, uh, like a homebrew chapter? Nice. What do you what do you call them? Ursa Day. That's that right. Ursa Day. Nice. Yeah, I've never done my, uh, or never tried my hand at doing any custom decals. Um, I have used some custom ones that were ordered for a project online. They looked good, but they weren't GW quality because the way the sheets are, it prints on top of the material and then you have to cut them out. But you have to cut out around every decal. And this one was a full sheet of decals, so you didn't just cut out one. You had to, well, you, you didn't just cut them out like GWs. Um, you had to cut out the decal and then really, really trim it. Otherwise, um, you had all this excess clear 
flim, and it was just it was a real pain in the butt. GW has got to spoil because you can just cut out the detail, and you know the the extra excess is already minimized. You know, that's the only major downside that I experienced anyway. Okay, let's get the top part where the scope is mounted. This is going on a little bit thin, so might have to do another pass on a couple spots. We shall see. Yeah, that would actually help a little bit. <coughs> Not sure if any of you guys are X-Men fans, but this guy's colors and the silver is really making me think of Colossus from X-Men. Cause I think he was red, yellow, and silver in his uniform. In the in the old cartoons anyway. Dab a few little dots on these studs. Oh shit. Oops. Alright, sorry, I drug paint where it didn't need to be. Dropped a S bomb in my stream. One little stud got a little bit too much silver, so we're gonna tone that down just a little bit. Okay. Now let's touch up the spots so I can still see a little bit of red through. be good now. Now let's do a uh, barrel. touch up one of these spots with red in just a second hit it with a little bit of the gray which we don't want we do not want this Colossus say if you want to be space marine you'll be red yellow and black space marine then you can be an X-Men like me Deadpool
Okay, I think once we get this in this spot right here. Well, assuming I got enough silver on there to get it in there. I think we're just about done with the silver and we're going to let it dry. Yeah. Grab that red real quick and uh, fix up this spot I messed up. Should be real too quick was on the side. Yeah. Let's just fix that real fast. Do, 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 do. That silver was too much. Yeah, I think we're good. Oh, wait. Haha! <laughs> I knew there's no spot I was looking at. Right there. Right there. Okay. And let's get that spot I screwed up. Put the dot of silver back. I think there's silver dots on the gun case or grip here. Yep, there is. These are probably real subtle, might not even be able to see them on the camera. Okay. Now, I'm going to come in with some black wash. Just known oil. Give it a nice shake. Gonna use our not as favoritist brush, and we're gonna come over the black parts and silver parts. Tone down some of this stuff. So down here by the handle. Also create a little bit more depth. Side of it up by his fingers, and see it's it's really like dulling down the gray that was a little bit intense. Catch the silver parts with it. Right up to the hand. Cool. Now. Let's uh, let the gun continue drawing because there's silver near the black. And let's come over his joints here. Let's get his joint right here. And trying to minimize how much touches the red, but right up to the edge is okay. Really want to focus this washing into as a joint. Let's pull just a little bit right in there, so let's thin it down. There we go. Oh, I see a spot I missed for silver. We'll get that in a second. Let's get this grenade right up to the red. Don't forget the top of it. All right, so hang on. Let me get these two silver spots I missed. There's two spots on the side of the uh, chest piece I forgot they had. It's right under the shoulder pad here. There's a little strap that's holding their backpack or their chest piece on. So I'm going to actually do that in silver. That way I can wash that and make that look cool. Okay. Cool. Let's turn around and get this on now.
you know, like I said, I'm kind of reworking the spot. I can see a little bit of red showing through. You guys might not be able to see, so I kind of really smooth the paint out over those areas and try to make it not look thick. There we go. Cool. All right. Getting ready to be back to the washing. Back to our not as favorite as brush. And again, we're just kind of working the wash into the joints right up to the red. get the uh, armpit area not getting quite enough wash pulled in there nice now because I hit his chest we're gonna get the paintbrush clean and just smooth that off cool same thing over here we're gonna get a little wash into the armpit and then where it hit the chest, I'm just going to sop it off. Get a little wash into the recess here where his um, elbow would be. Get the brush clean and get off the excess that washed over. Oh. Alright, let's get in here and wash some of this helmet. Well, not helmet, but the parts next to it. Get right in here. We're gonna wash over right there, right up to the little nose guard. That's it. And then right to the back. So yeah. Surgical wash application here. There we go. Clean up. And we're going to come over. This one's going to be a little bit harder to get into. That's where it's located. And his head's cocked to his left side, right up next to his gorget. Or gorget. However, you'll say it. Okay. Paintbrush clean. Get off the excess by his earpiece. Drop our paint. Paper towel on the floor like a dum dum. Let's get a slightly bigger paintbrush now. And we're going to wash part of his gun. Alright, so we're going to wash the uh, little grip here. We go right up to the red and the crack. Underside. Look at over here. Same thing. Now we're going to wash the silver bits. Missed a spot. Hang on. There's a silver spot on the other side that I had neglected. I'm sorry, Space Marine. Adeptus Justy Compentia screwed up, buddy. Don't be mad. Do not exterminate us, please. I talk to the models a lot. I don't know if you guys do that. I do. Back to washing. Alright, so let's get in here. This spot. His fingers, under some there. Okay. 
And you notice I'm avoiding the spot that I just touched up to let it dry before I wash it. I love putting on oil over silver though because it really subdues it and really makes it pop. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I want it to pool dark right there. It looks good. It's going to look awesome. Alright, let's get up in here and wash his scope. Sorry, had some wash cooling up in a spot I did not want it, so I just blew it. Get it to fly off. There we go. Okay. Now let's get to the tip of the gun here with the barrel and such. Cooling on this has gone the way of the dodo, so let's get it back. I rub blue on the model. Now we can do the handle, it should be reasonably dry to accept the wash now. Okay, let's give that just a smidge to dry. Get a little sip of my caffeine. Get our not favorite brush. We're gonna give this known oil a little shake. Mostly to get some back in the lip. And now while the gun's drying, we're going to try and wash ever so gently around the border of the shoulder pad. Really subdue the uh, the black and gray down just a little bit. And touch right up to the yellow barely. I wanna we want to make it look like there's a little bit of depth and shadow without discoloring the yellow too much. And also tone down the black and gray that we applied. Because it has a way of being a little bit bright. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. You are pretty, Maureen. The Adeptus Astartes have created quite a beautiful man. Quite a beautiful man. Let's get the other side. There we go. And now, the other shoulder pad. Let's get it right here, right up next to him. Get that black part done. Okay, get in there. There you go. Yeah. I'm going to have to touch up another spot. Hold on. Wash dripped. Time to fix. Un minuto. Alright, come here, Marine. You got wash in a spot you weren't supposed to. You were out last night and you weren't supposed to be. Mr. AWOL Marine. Okay, sorry. Fixed the spot. Back to our not favorite favorite paintbrush, and we're gonna use continue going on and around the shoulder borders here. Right up to the yellow without touching too much, ever so slightly. Move that out just a little bit. There we go. Nice. And then we're going to come over and we're going to get this spot. Right 
right up to the yellow. Awesome. Okay, so we should be just about done with the silver. Alright, silver. Sure. Oh, just drop your marines. That's exactly how you do it, fellas. We're going to come in here and we're going to put a little bit of Agrax on the red casing for the gun to rewash that. Hopefully, create a slightly different shade than the model itself. And give it a little extra pizzazz. So, in here, we're going to get up here on those. The Picantini rail is what this might be called for them. Try not to touch where the black wash is still pooling. If you do touch, it's probably not the end of the world, but try to minimize it. Come over the side now. Right. There we go. That'll give it some nice, a little bit more of a shade difference in depth than the actual model's color. So it's got a little bit difference. Okay, let that dry for a second. We're going to be moving on to another step because we are going to be approaching the downward spiral of the model. We need that wash on the shoulder pads to dry just a second because we're going to apply some decals. Hang on one second, fellas. Sorry, I got a message here. It's slightly important. Alright, let's see. The shoulder pads look relatively dry. They do. Cool. Alright, so we're going to take a little side trip here. Cut us out some decals. Where is that decal sheet? Alright, give me a sec, guys. This will be off camera. You'll probably hear me cutting. But we're going to cut out some Blood Angel decals real quick. Alright, so we've got our first one. Boop. Decal. And because this is my second live stream, his shoulder designation is going to be a 2 for the other shoulder. My last one had a designation of 1 because he was the first one I've done. This one gets to be a 2. Alright, so what we're going to do here, just like I did the last decal, we're going to put some score marks in it. You probably won't see, but it's going to make it a little bit easier to apply. Yes. Ever so slightly put some little scores in this. Oops. And this is going to help it um, overlap the circle curvature of the shoulder pad a little bit better. It's a little extra work, but it's going to be worth it in the end. There we go. And last one. Right, now for the two. We don't have to do so much because it's not going to take up as much uh, real estate and it's just a different design and look. So these aren't going to be as crucial. We're still doing them, but not as big of an issue. But just little micro slits. Okay. So to apply your decal, you're going to need a couple of things tweezers. You're going to want to get yourself some micro saw and micro set. Set and micro saw. Boop. Use the micro set to set the decal and micro saw to it's a solvent. 
So it's going to help it um, melt kind of over the shoulder pad. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to get this decal saturated in some water first. And I'm doing this early on in the stage so that I can apply a couple layers of the micro sol and let this really um, blend into the shoulder pad so that when I finish it, I can hit it with the matte varnish and it'll be already be done. That way I can do the drawing and the model will be complete this evening. But he is not far off right now. Let's go ahead and see if this uh, decal is ready to slide. It is. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to get our little marine here. We're going to put our micro set on the shoulder pad first. Just get all over the shoulder pad. And then we're going to slide the decal into place onto the shoulder. Bam. Now we're going to pick them up and we're going to get it where we want it to be. So we just kind of slide very gently, a little you know, poking motions, things like that. Yo, Kanar, what's up? If you get a moment, type in uh, why so red, all one word phrase, that will enter you in to potentially win this model if you would like to. I don't mind you winning, uh, even though you're my moderator, because you're the only moderator I have, and you do a lot to support me and my channel. So, I don't mind you winning a little something something here and there. Alright, so it looks like we've got that about where we want it. And we're just going to kind of, you got it flattened out about as good as we're going to get it. We're just going to let that set. Now we're going to get a number two. No, no. Uh, no exclamation point this time. I took that off. Oh, uh, hang on. Just this. No exclamation point. It's case sensitive and all that stuff. There you go. Alright, let's see if that's soaked enough. See if it'll slide. Nope. Give it a few more seconds. Dun, 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 dun. I think last week I did hashtag, but when I post on Facebook, hashtags go to Twitter. And why so red on Twitter is like pictures of people that are high, and I didn't want that associated with my Facebook business page. So, did not post those. Alright, so like last time, we're going to get some of this micro set on the shoulder pad first. And we're going to put this, slide this decal on. Now, if you weren't here last week, or if you were, it's going to be reiterating, a slick surface is the best for applying decals. It's going to let these guys adhere and uh, smooth out a lot easier than a matte surface. So you put um, gloss varnish over the surface that's getting a, or receiving a decal first, put micro saw, put the decal down, uh, let it dry, and then put micro set over the top, or excuse me, micro set and then micro saw. Put micro saw over the top after it's dried the first time and do a couple layers, and then let it dry. And once you're satisfied with its adherence and all that stuff, put a matte varnish over it and almost all the edge of the decal will be invisible and it will look like it was hand painted on. So, a little tip from the pros. Yeah, it's sliding. I can't quite get it where I want it in flat. I'm also slightly OCD, so I'm like trying to line this up properly. So it looks like it's about as good as that's going to get. It looks like it's about as flat as it's going to get. All right, slide down just a smidgen for me, decal. No, that was a little bit more than a smidgen. All right. Up just a little bit. Let's see, how's that look? Does that look about even? I think that is about as good as that's going to get. Alright, so we'll let that uh, let that dry out. 
Woo! Bang in the camera. So we're done with that. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to come in with micro saw in a little bit. While we're waiting, flip our palette over since we're done with those colors. And we're going to get us some brown. Get it on our palette. Do, 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 do. We're going to paint his pouch. Right. And this looks like the same spot I did the brown last week. Serendipitous occasion. Okay. Let's get our not so favorite brush. If you're doing yours like mine in this stage, you should be careful not to touch the decal on the shoulder, let it dry. Just be careful where manhandle. I'm also gonna paint his Aquila brown for now. So let's get this out of the way. You shall see why I painted this brown in a upcoming step. I guess technically it's a modified Aquila. This one has the skull in the center instead of the eagle head, but whatever. Fun fact, if you didn't know, unless I read this in a not good source, the Aquila for Space Marines Imperium, double-headed eagle, if you ever look at the official one, it's only got one eyeball. And the eyeball is generally on the right side. Or excuse me, uh, left side. And that is because the future is represented by going to the right, which is the future, forward in time. And we are blind to the future because we don't know what's coming. And the eagle's eye is open to the left, which is the past. And hindsight is always 2020. And you can always look at the past and try and learn something. So next time you see the Imperial Aquila, that is what it means. And I think that's actually pretty philosophical for a miniatures company. So there you go. That's why the two-headed eagle for Codex or for Imperial only has one eyeball. Okay. So that's done. Now let's come back here and get his pouch. Come here, kangaroo man. Paint your pouch. Now this time you gotta be careful, you don't want to touch the red, but you also don't want to touch the silver. The silver was okay touching this pouch because it wasn't painted yet. And make sure the paint's going on thin, you don't want to have streaks or built up paint. Try and get it right up to the red if you can. There you go, get the top. camera sorry guys now's your check and we're gonna get up under here right up to the grenade looks like we touched just a smidge so we're gonna clean off our paintbrush and smooth that out I think that's probably sufficient. Now, we're going to come to his gun as well. And we're going to put some brown on this eagle thing too. And smooth it up to the edge and... There we go. Now... Before I get to the next step, anybody want to guess why I painted the uh, chest brown or the uh, wings on the uh, gun brown? Give you guys a second to think about that while I get the next paint out. Because we're going to mix some brown with that brown and uh, make a highlight. Uh, by the way, the brown I used was uh, leather brown from Model Color Vallejo. And I'm going to mix in some su suntan flesh from Reaper.
Yep, not quite as bright as I would like it. Alright, so nobody commented. Uh, the reason that I have painted the chest piece brown and the piece on the gun brown is we're going to be applying gold on top of it. I don't always do that because uh, I'm lazy, but it's going to make the gold apply a little bit easier. Now we're going to come in with our more favorite brush. Woo, sorry for the camera here, guys. Banging things. And we're going to do our highlight right here on the pouch. Just down the edge. Catch the top of the pouch here. Catch the top edge. Going down the other side, right up to the grenade, to the butt, down the bottom. It's an exaggerated highlight, we want this pouch to pop. Okay, and we're going to do a couple of scratch marks across the pouch. Let's go down this way. And then one thin one, two thin ones through it. And let's do some on the side over here. Once we apply the wash over this, this will be more subdued. But those scratch marks are going to look good. Cool. Get that a moment. While that dries, we're going to go ahead and get our micro saw. Give it and get that ready. And just apply a layer, layer over the decals. This is the first layer of micro saw. And you want to be very gentle. You do not want to move the decal with this. Just want to put some over the top. Sometimes you will move it inadvertently. Just get it back into place as quickly as possible. Okay, and I just I go over the whole decal in the shoulder area with this chemical. And it smells a lot like vinegar. It's a solvent of some sort that's designed to eat decals and almost etch them into the model. Okay, I'm trying to push down one of the spots that was rippled up. Okay, and we're going to let that dry and move back to what we were doing. Hang on one second. Let me check my cables. possible I was bumping into it and uh, knocking it out. Yeah, the upload looks good. That looks fine. Alright, I've checked my cables. I've pushed everything to make sure it wasn't loose. I think what's happening is I'm accidentally hitting the camera cable and it might be jiggling a little. So we might be um, getting some disruptions in the feed. It's the setup I currently have. I apologize. Uh, is the audio cutting or is it just the um, video? Okay, so looks like everything's over there. Um, let me know if you're having any other issues. If the stream, for some reason, has a little bit of downtime, something goes wrong, Kanar has my um, contact info, and he usually gets with me really, really quick, and then comments in the chat to let everyone know what's going on. So if there's a problem, he will definitely be the middleman, but let me know if there's any other issues happening. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, we're going to shake up some Agrax now. That pouch is probably dried. And get that. Use our not-so-favorite brush. And we are going to apply some wash over the pouch. Try not to touch the grenade too much, but get right up next to it. Same thing with the red. Just get right up to the armor. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on. Sometimes it, uh, it's a little wonky. Thank you for bearing with me, though. I know sometimes if there's technical difficulties, people freak out, but appreciate you guys bearing with me. So that's where we are so far. 
we are going to shake up some known oil and put a little black on the chest straps we missed earlier. And I'm going to move this actually because with my depth perception with this camera, there's a good chance I was going to knock that wash over. Which would have been hilarious for you guys to watch and a tragedy for me. Because that's almost full and I'd be in scramble mode because I have my laptop on this table that's running the stream. And I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's a very expensive laptop and I don't want paint sucked up into the fans of my MacBook. But anyway, in other news, we're just washing these little straps here. Let's get slightly up to the front. Looks like I hit some of the red armor, so just clean off the brush real fast. And sop up where the wash was to get it off. I think we're good. Let's close that very carefully. Clean that off. Okay, now, while that uh, brown wash is drying, which I think has turned out reasonably well, the is looking good. We're going to come in and grab, bom, 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 some gold. This is uh, old gold from Vallejo, model color, color. i to drip some down here, drip, 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 drip. Probably more than we need right there, but better safe than sorry. I'm going to try two drops of water, see if that's too thin. Let's go ahead and get that mixed up. I'm going to try not to touch this brown that's next to it. It might have been too close. Do, 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 do. That is looking pretty decent. There we go. Awesome. Okay. We're going to come in with our more favoritist brush. And we're going to come in and we're going to hand paint the Aquila gold. Try really hard not to touch the red. But very, very careful. I'm a big fan of the actual Aquila. I'm not as big fan of the skulls everywhere thing, but I guess we make do with the models that they supply us with in the kits. Hey, okay, we're just going to come over to the other side. I really want to paint a Blood Raven, but I can't find anyone who wants to donate a couple decals for me to use for the shoulders, and I really don't want to try and freehand that symbol because I feel like I'm going to screw it up and it's going to look like a crayon drawing. And then everyone's going to be like, you're a commissioned artist! Ah, look at your crap! Um, and unfortunately, Forge World stopped producing them, and I didn't know that, so it's going to be hard to source one. Come over to his gun, and we're gonna paint that gold, as, the little uh, symbol gold as well. Not the whole gun. It's not 007 Golden Eye. Not the golden gun. Once this gold's down, we're going to give it a moment to dry before we get to the next step. Sorry, I'm making sure it's not too thick on there, so I was kind of scooping some of that off. I wanted some of the detail on the skull not to be covered or obscured. Okay. Mm. 
this decals a few more minutes. All right, so while the gold's drying, we are going to grab some Ushabti bone. Mm, should give that a good shake. Scrape some of that out of here. And these high pigment parchment colors lend themselves really well to being thinned down because they are very high in pigment. And if you don't thin them, some of the other ones you can get away with right out of the pot, but if you don't thin this, it's going to start going on kind of thick sometimes, and you don't want it too thick. Yeah, the uh, since you commented, I'm a big fan of the way the head turned out. Yeah, well, Imperial Fists, wait, yeah, Imperial Fists, those were last week. The Necron stream, if I ever do one of those, that's going to be a real fast video. Those are not very, the time consuming part of doing Necron is what do you pick out to do the extra detail with, or on, because, like, there's a lot of silver metallic Anyway, we're uh, we're using the uh, Ushabti bone, and we're painting the uh, purity seal here. Right, salamanders are on the list. I've got decals for those, so I'm probably going to do Dark Angels and Salamanders at some point. Though... Imperial Fist are basically the McDonald's Marines if you do the Codex picture with the yellow and red and Salamanders are basically the Christmas Marines with the uh, green and red. second to dry. Come back in with some of this brown that we mixed. It's still wet. And we're just going to do an extra little bit of a highlight on the pouch one more time. Now that it's dry, because this is going to look bright. So catch the, the edge ever so gently. And then this edge. Let's use the side of the brush. And we're going to taper it here. And we're going to catch the top of the pouch here one more time. Just a hint. There we go. And then the little lip where the pouch connects. Ooh, too much. Hang on. Damage control! Yeah, you, uh, you missed the decals, but um, basically we, we applied the decals. We, and I'll, I'll do a real quick uh, once over. The shoulder pads were already glossed. You put a, a gloss varnish down, put this on top right before you slide the decal on. So you slide the decal over micro set. Then you use a little micro set on your paintbrush to smooth the decal on and get it set where you want it. Let it dry. Once it dries, you put micro sol over the top. Uh, and I'm doing it in multiple layers to give it time to... Um, kind of eat the decal a couple of times to really smooth it. Um, you just want to let this dry in between and I started the decal early, earlier than I normally would in a paint project because uh, I'm going to finish this on stream and I want to be able to actually uh, have the decals finished before I matte varnish so need these to be thinned out and dry before the matte varnish. So we're applying another layer of microsol just to let that eat it the decal some more. And we're sopping up the excess down there. Come over to the other side, do the same thing, same thing, same thing. Okay. 
and then let it dry. Now the gold should be dry enough to move on. What we're going to do with the gold is we are going to actually mix up a little bit of wash. We don't need much. So do, 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 do. let me clean out my little cup here. All right, so for gold, we're actually going to use uh, Druchi Violet. We're just going to get like two drops of this. Like one, two, and we're going to pull the rest back in there. Okay, we're going to get two drops of the matte varnish. We're going to give it a good shake. Make sure it's all mixed up. Two drops. One, two. And we're going to try our hand getting the littlest drip of flow retarder. And actually, I'm just going to dip this right in here and get a drip. Aha! That's what you get, flow retarder or flow aid. Boom! I'm getting to mix up with dry retarder, sorry. Alright, so we're going to mix this up. Don't need a lot. This is going to seem silly, but we are putting a purple wash on the gold. There we go. Whoops, finger sticky. There. That spot will work. Let's get some of that junk off my fingers. And we're going to get our not as favoritist brush. And we're going to put some of this purple across the gold. right up to the gorget. Don't want it to get on the red too much. But right around the edge of the Aquila. And you can use like Agrax or Sepia, it just depends, or even a red, it just depends on what kind of gold look you want. I really like the way it looks with the purple wash. But I do thin it down because I don't want straight purple over it. And we're going to sop up a little bit that's pulling right there. There we go. We didn't want too much there. And then we're going to come over and we're going to do it on the gun. Drying, we're gonna get a little bit where it touched the red off. Cool. Let that dry. Now we're gonna come back and we're gonna put another coat of the purity seal color down because it was a little bit thin, which is fine. Better to have a couple of thin coats than one thick one. Yep, what's up, me plus? Clean out our paintbrush here. Take it easy, man. Alright, we're going to get some corn red. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm always excited to live stream painting, especially when people are hanging out and talking to me. I like, uh, I like teaching. It's pretty cool. 
I'd love to do classes sometime, but I don't know if I'm good enough to do classes. But I think it would be a fun experience to get to that point. I'm using some corn red. I'm going to paint the uh, Purity Seal red, which seems redundant because he's already red, but it'll be a shade different. Uh, you can also do a, a purple for the Purity Seal on um, Blood Angels for a different color. You'll see that quite often. I like consistency. I feel like a Purity Seal is red wax with the parchment, so it should stay red wax with the parchment. Regardless of their marine, it's been blessed. That is the way I view it. But if you want the purple, that's going to be a good contrast, and you can absolutely do that. I touched the parchment just a smidge, so we're going to fix that real quick with our not so favoritist brush. And we're done with that color for now. Now let's check out how our decals are going. How are you looking? He's smoothing out quite nicely. I think one more layer of the uh, micro set or micro uh, saw, and we'll be good to go. We've got our micro saw back up. Just put another layer on top of this decal. Really start trying to get that completely smoothed. So we'll put another layer on. Be very gentle because this thing, if you're doing this, it's probably going to be pretty etched up now. You don't want to tear it. So then you got to start over if you can even get it off. So be very, very careful. should be all we need for the Microsoft. Yeah, this is from uh, Warhammer 40k, Games Workshop game. Um, company has been around for, oh, what, 30 years? No, company's been around a little bit longer than 30 years. Uh, Warhammer 40k turned 30 this year, I believe. Um... Rogue Trader might be a little bit older, but basically it's an old-ass game. <laughs> yep. You'll also see me at some point probably paint some of these models. This is from War Machine. So some trolls. Never got around to finishing these guys, but yeah. Some other stuff. There's always something special laying around my room. Yeah, so 40K is 30 years. GW is older than 30 years because Fantasy came out first. Um, I think Fantasy was like 83 or 85. And GW wasn't always called Games Workshop. They actually had a name before that as well. But yeah. Very old. They've been making models since before I was born. Let's see that purity seal is dry. It's not. Alright, so let's get back to the gold now. Let's uh, give this a quick mix. And if you haven't, uh, my website, thearmedpainter.com, I don't feel bad plugging myself. I also don't feel bad sending you there because if you're not a minis guy, it's not about money. It's just about showing off. Um, I've got a portfolio page, and you're welcome to check out some cool painted minis at some point if you're ever bored. Or if you ever have questions or want to BS about minis, I will talk minis games with you all day long. All right, so we've got our gold down. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix some really bright silver in there. Just straight silver. We're going to make this a bright, bright gold. No real rhyme or reason to how much you put. Just put enough, mix it, and see if it looks good. You just want it to be bright. And this should be really bright. There we go, so it's almost like a white gold. And we're going to come in now with our favoriteish brush, and we're going to highlight, as soon as I move some of these bottles, give me one second, let me move some of these paint bottles. i got to slide stuff around. 
Sorry for the shake. It's my nausea test. Alright, so we're going to get in here and we are going to highlight some of these petals here. It's going to be a little slightly time to me. We're going to try and hit the edge of every little petal. And for basic tabletop standard, this is excessive. You do not have to do this. Just the gold with the wash is probably enough. But if you want to take it to the next level, there you go. What is Kanar saying? What are you doing? Did you say something? Uh, Kanar, my birthday is Sunday. I turn. He sent me a message on, uh, um, uh, not Steam, but uh, Twitch. Sorry, guys. So it's slightly random. Uh, Kanar, my birthday is Sunday, the thirteenth. Getting old. was hoping to hit 50 followers by then. I might make the cut. We shall see. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now we're going to come across the other side now. And just hit the edge of the pedals. Oh, hey, I might have picked up some while I was streaming. So when I stream on my PC, I've got some cool overlays. My Mac won't support them because the company that made the HD capture sucks. At some point, I'm going to buy a new one. So on there, I get notifications. On here, I don't. So I didn't even realize I reached it. I reached a milestone goal, and I was oblivious. So how about that? And we're going to finish up the rest of these petals. Yay! It's exciting! And we're going to do the little skull here, so I'm just going to do a little touch, touch. I'm going to get the under socket just a little dab. Just the dab 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 a room. Gonna get the bridge of his nose if we can get in there with the tip of the brush. There we go. And let's do his forehead here. Oh yeah, so Aquila accomplished. And I'll be honest, dude. That looks really good. I'm sorry, I don't toot my own horn very often, <laughs> but the one, the second layer there really made that pop against the red, and he, it just his chest is really just bouncing off the screen for me. So I'm, I actually have you can't see me, but I have a really big smile on my face because that turned out very well. Very excited. So we're gonna come over here to this one. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna hit the um, the little feathers of the wing. We're not going all the way, we're just catching the outside. We just want to give the illusion of depth. Now we're going to catch the skull here. Catch the jaw. Backside, cheekbone. There you go. Done. Okay, now we're going to 
Mix up a little bit of black. Don't need a lot for this next step. Just a little dribble. And believe it or not, fellas, we are approaching done. Because that was just the hint of black. A drop of water should be good to go. We're going to mix that up. Should be sufficient. And we're going to add some writing to his purity seal. Use our favoritest brush. And we're just going to do some very, very light, thin squigglies. Squiggles. You'll notice I'm trying to barely touch it. As Bob Ross would say, and as I frequently say, two hairs and some air. And that's what we're doing here. Very, very faint touch. You can see some of these strokes I'm doing. Don't even leave black because I'm like trying to barely touch. You don't want it to be like a thick black line. Oh, uh, yeah, buddy. It will be based by the time I finish this stream. So if people are here, they'll see it. Yeah, it was a little bit thicker than I wanted, but can't quite get the angle I want in there. Let's get in here on the underside one. Alright, cool. Let's see if it's still fresh. Yeah, it's good. Tidy that up just a smidge. And tidy up under the purity seal wax. Thank you. He is he is rapidly approaching the finish line. He is he's getting there. Not too much left to do. So while the purity seal dries, we are going to grab. First of all, we're going to turn this. Do, 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 do. Um, we're going to grab some green. This is Intermediate Green from a uh, Vallejo Model Color. I think it's called Panzer something. Let me pull off this. It's from their uh, yeah, Panzer Series. Sorry, they had a... Who puts the price tag over the name of the paint? I don't know. And we're going to add just a dribble of water to that because that looks thin enough already. Thin this down. Just there we go. Do, 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 do. And okay. So what we're gonna be doing with this is the lenses. And this is one of the hardest things to do on camera, so I may not be able to accurately show you. I may have to pop off for a second. It's hard to get in there. But we're gonna do the lens on the gun real quick. It's going to be tough to get in there, so we're going to try. You don't. You want to leave a little hint of silver around the ring. There we go. Awesome. That went out. That turned out quite well. It's not finished. That's just the, the quick, or the, uh, the base color. Now we're going to come in here, and this one's going to be a little bit more annoying to do. Uh, we're going to get in here on his little GPS tracker thingy to Bob, and we're going to put green on his screen and try not to hit the black. Um, we'll be lucky if I can achieve this goal. But we're going to try. Dun, dun, dun. Might be about as good as it's going to get. Okay. Now we're going to let that dry for a second. And I'm bouncing around a lot. If you were working on a lot of models at once, you would probably be doing this one step 
on like 10 to 20 models. So you wouldn't have to let things dry because they're going to inadvertently be drying anyway. Anyway, back to the purity seal. We are going to grab some Agrax Earthshade and we are going to wash this bad boy. We're using our not so favoritist brush. And we're just going to put some brown wash over it. And we're going to hit the wax seal as well. And we're going to get right next to the armor. Try not to bleed over too much, but a little bit's probably okay. And kind of don't let it pull too much, just kind of drag it. You'll, you'll notice when it starts looking kind of the way you want it to look with the parchment. And we're going to come in here and smooth out right next to the armor just a little bit so the wash isn't too blown out. Come over to the back. The back of the parchment does not have writing because they would not write on both sides of the purity seal. At least in my world they don't. In your world they might. Okay, and that wash bled over. So, clean our brush off and just kind of sop up where it's next to the armor. There you go. I'm going to let that dry. Close our wash. Okay. Let's see how these decals are looking. I don't think I need another layer. I think that's probably pretty good. Yeah, and that one. Ooh, yeah, that one flattened out really nice. There was a, a wrinkle in it I thought was going to be a problem maker, but it was good. All right, so let's come in now and try and get the lenses on his helmet. Ugh, I'm not looking forward to it, fellas. It's the part that sucks. So let's try and get in here. I'm trying to use like barely any paint, just a little bit, because I don't want to mess up here. Let's turn them and try and get back into the eye socket a little bit better. There we go. Much better now for the other one. Glorious, glorious eyeball. And haven't trying to trying to line it up on the camera and do this is a feat, I tell you. Look like a gymnast if you guys saw how I was all contorted. Quite amusing. There we go. Nice. Okay, so let's see if you guys can see that face. Oh, they like, oh. I haven't painted any Ultramarines, which is my main army, in so long. And this guy and the last guy I did, like, bringing them to life, it, oh, it does something. Like, I get, like, it sounds really stupid. I kind of get chills a little bit. Because it's like a story, and I look at him, I'm like, dude, it, it, this is tooting my own horn, I apologize. Uh, and there are better painters, um, I'll tell you a couple of my favorites in a second, but I look at him, I'm like, oh my god, you look so cool, I need an army of you. No, I don't, I don't need blood angels. <laughs> um, but anyway, there, there's a couple of artists I like that I look up to, um, I don't have a huge channel, so it's not like I'm pushing anyone away, but Kenny from Next Level Painting has um, almost dropped an F-bomb there, he is freaking amazing. And Lester Bursley from Awesome Paint Job, and I'm not sure if he still does um, commissions, but that guy is freaking beyond good. And I don't know how many Golden Demons the guy's won, but he is stupid good. So, alright, so, let me put the models on the screen so you can see it. Um, uh, yeah, um, practically, practically have one behind my head. Um... We're going to mix just a smidge of this um, Ushabti bone again. Just a little bit. We don't need a lot. 
for this and put a drop of water thin that down and again if you were using a wet palette like a smart painter you'd be fine but I don't use one a lot because I'll end up with all this paint on here that I'll never use other than this one stage and it's eh. I use it a lot when I'm doing high detail but believe it or not this is good detail but if I'm painting like something for myself like it goes above and beyond it's it's ridiculous how much time I spend on my own models like the um, edge highlight stage is usually double what I did on this and the Aquila would be double that I would do another stage of silver to really pop it but this <laughs> looks good anyway we've thinned down the um, Ushabti bone and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna just do the edges of the purity seal to really make it come back out So, uh, Gamer Dad NC, I'm assuming you're from North Carolina. Are you, are you on my friends list? Are you a follower on Facebook? Are you in the Facebook um, Kit Kringle group, or are you just is it just a coincidence that I'm from North Carolina and you're from North Carolina? Oh, well, there you go. That explains that one. Oh, well, that explains that too. Yeah, I can't remember who added me to the group. I might have joined, or Doug Henningsen. I don't know if you know him, but Doug, I think, might have invited me to the group. I'm like, very high probability he's the one who added me to it, but it's a good chance I might have just found it on my own too. He's, um, I've painted a lot of his Sisters of Battle, and I've painted his Skitari. I don't know if you know him. Actually, I just blasted the internet with his first and last name. Sorry, Doug. Don't judge me. If you get a bunch of random Facebookers, this is why. They want to see your painted models. We're going to come to the back side of this purity seal just because there's no writing doesn't mean it wouldn't have some cool looking highlights. Okay, so that part of the purity seal is basically finished. What we're going to do though. So we're going to come back in with just a smidget of this Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm not even going to thin this. I'm just going to take it right out of the pot because I just need a few dabs to finish up the wax part. So let's get some wax parts here. And we're just going to dab on here. Little high points. There we go, pretty seal done. Oh, uh, I did just get a um, vibration on my phone, so that is entirely possible that it's you. Give me one second and I will look. Had to touch up a little spot on here. I rubbed some paint off. Told you guys that was going to happen. Should have wore gloves the whole time. Minuto guys, I have to see who this mystery man is. Do 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 do. Oh yeah, hello. Yeah, you just talked to me too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay.
I know who you are now. You cannot hide from me. Where's this wash? Um, I know I brought it. There it is. All right. So next up is going to be some Beal Tan Green. I bet you can guess what we're going to do. We're going to wash some green stuff. We're going to use our not so favorite brush. And we're going to wash them. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come in here on this lens, and we're gonna put a dabble of wash on there. Do, 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 do. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I'll follow you, dude. I used to play a crap load of League of Legends, but that community is toxic as hell, and I quit. I used to play that all the time. Like, I legit, when I was in college, I played that game like eight hours a night, dude. That was my game. I was, I mean, it, it sounds bad. I was pretty good in my opinion, but man, did I not get paired with trolls all the time. All the time. It was so bad. We're going to use our favoritest brush and we're going to apply a very light amount of wash into the lens area. We're going to pull up towards the top because that's where we want this to pull. We want the shadow to be at the top near his eyebrow region. Yeah, man, I can play casual with you. Um, I think I had like 2,300 casual games or something ridiculous in. And then I switched over to ranked years ago because um, that was what was left. When I left the game, I owned every champion in the game. Um, and I had skins for almost every champion. Nice. Um, but the game's changed since then. The community's still toxic as shit. But, yeah. Believe it or not, guys, this guy is he, he is this guy is rapidly approaching finished. He is really close. We are almost finished. Alright. So we're gonna let that uh, green dry for just a moment here. Which it looks like it might be, yeah, pretty good. Alright, so we're gonna come in with our uh, Slightly favoritist brush. Or favoritist. Fa favoritist brush. Coming back in with the base color green. And we're going to do some um, like little lines in here. Like a little radar thing. If it'll go. It's going to be faint, but that's what we're going to do. It's just like a little crescent. And now we're going to draw two lines going down towards the corner. Whoops. Nausea check. Sorry, guys. I banged the camera like a dirt. Cool. So that's very subtle. Don't worry. It's about to not be so subtle. So we're going to come over to the guns lens, and we're going to catch the bottom right side. This is going to be tricky because of where this is. And we're going to put a crescent from the bottom all the way to the top. Be careful not to touch the silver. going to do ugh, the hard part the eyeball lenses this one we're just going to kind of do the bottom 
half of the eye and kind of do a crescent and we're just going to lighten up the bottom portion is what we're going to try and do but it's going to be more of a bigger highlight okay. I'm going to come in here do the same thing on the other eye and these are really subtle colors here this is, this is very subtle in person it's going to be a lot more prominent what this is going to do is it's going to make the uh, shadow more prominent. Okay, we're done with that green. Uh, whatever I was at, this is where I'm at now. So, gonna assume you missed a crap load of stuff. Now give me a second, I have to open this paint. It's actually wrapped in tape from the shipper. Shipping company. Guess they really didn't want it to bust in transit. They wrapped it good, dagnabbit. Alright, I'm going to give this a quick shake. The paint is really pooled in it. Alright, so we are using Montana, um, where's the name of this? Uh, it's, it's supposed to be fluorescent acid green, it just says fluor, like, like, it's a fluor de lis. We're going to mix some of this with the remaining green here. Do, 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 do. A copious amount is fine, because we do want this to be like a very bright green. Mixy, 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 mix. mix, mix. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks great. And you could just do the straight green if you wanted to. I don't because I'm going to come in with white as well. So this one we're going to be going in with... Let me find my much smaller brush. Not much smaller brush. Uh, our favorite brush. We are going to try and do a very thin edge highlight on the bottom of the lens... Um, right near where the other highlight in or, or was, but you don't want to go over the whole thing. So we had a thick green line or thicker one, a really, really thin one. It's hard to explain, but I'm going to try and replicate it here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this lens here. We're going to do the bottom right corner of it, and we're not going to do the whole thing. We're just going to try and put a little line. There we go. And then we're going to come in with white later and finish that off. So here we go. Now this, we're going to come in. We're going to go over the area that we did. If I can get that tip on here. Okay. Do some little dash marks. Okay. And then the two lines. spot off of here that I screwed up okay so now we're gonna come in and we're really 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 gonna try and get this eyeball done on camera but if I can't I'm sorry it's not the easiest thing to do when I'm streaming oh man Whew. Now watch, I'm not going to be able to get that other one to match. I'm going to get pissed. Mm -mm. Nathan, I tell you what. If you win this Marine, you better flaunt it in Josh's face. Yeah, it's not quite as low as I wanted. Let's see if I can... Touch that up real quick. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Cool. Alright. Now, for the last step, the last step, 
we are going to come in with some white wherever I have put it. All right. It's the uh, uh, Vallejo white. All right. So in chat, put uh, type in um, why so red, all one word, spelled the way you would normally spell it, and that'll enter you into the contest. And if you win, I will ship you this model in the mail. Uh, last week, I um, actually, uh, Bob, Lord17, he's not in chat right now because he's working, but uh, he won the uh, Imperial Fist Marine last week. Yep. I completely understand, Tim. It is quite frustrating. And I usually give a, a like a couple minute warning at the end of the stream and make sure everyone's had ample time to enter. People who didn't know, I make sure they know. And then after the point of no return, only so much I could do. All right, so now we mix white. We're gonna come in and we're really gonna drive this um, lens home. So we're gonna come in on the uh, rifle here. We're gonna get the extreme bottom side and just put a very very thin white line at the bottom corner. tidy that up there we go now we're going to come in on the opposite side of this lens and we are going to put the faintest white dot we're going to do one big one or a larger one and then one small one right next to it if we can if we can get this to cooperate. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna try and zoom in so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's see if it'll focus. Yeah, so and then it's got white dots. Okay, we're going to come in on the uh, little GPS thing here. Very, very faint or thin amount of white here. Oops. Sorry, banging in the camera. I had uh, my other paintbrush on my ear and was banging into the camera. So we're just going to catch where these intersect very, very gently. Just a little hint. And then we're going to do some dots on the top of the screen here. Give the illusion that it is an actual screen screen. Let's do, um, let's do them up in this other corner here. Dot. Uh, generally, probably most contrast. I'm not going to do a red lens on a red model because it's going to look bad. Um, red with the Imperial Fist works. Um, I Did I do green last week or did I do red? I did red because he had the skull helmet. Uh, Ultramarines, you could do red or green. Um, I've done both. I think red looks more like night vision. Or not red, uh, green looks more like night vision. Red is more uh, in line with what the Codex has. So Now we're going to try and do the eyeball and... Holding breath here. We don't want to screw up because this, at least his right eye, turned out really good. Ugh. Hang on. Damage control.
Sorry, I'm scooping that white off. It went in the wrong spot. Let me, uh, let me put another drop of water in this so it's not so thick. It was fine, but thickened up a little bit on me. Let's try this on the other side first while that cleanup job is drying. Just want the faintest of lines. Okay. Now we're going to put a dab, a little white dab right in the top corner. When in a little subtle, we're going to come in and do that dot one more time. There we go. Much better. Fantastic. Now let's come in here and wrap this guy's other eyeball up. Now don't screw up on the eyeball. It did last time. the same thing. Alright, damage control. Do I have a stray hair hanging on us? Hang on guys, I got a little, a little hair in my paintbrush here. Alright, let's see if we can do this now. It was getting in my way. Now it's not one to come off. Damn it, white. This is what happens to me when I do lenses. I don't work quick enough and it starts to dry on the brush. I got part of it to set. Come on. Just a little more. Oh, I just need the one little loop to take hold here. It's giving me some trouble. Hang on. Yeah, i come in with a little bit of this green touch-up job. But you guys didn't expect to watch me work on one lens this long. That's what OCD will get you. and touch up the uh, edge there. Let's put the dot in the top corner. Yep, all right, let's give me one second, guys. I am going to touch up the bottom ring, but we are just about done. So I bang the camera around some more. See if I can get this to touch up the bottom edge real fast. 
Might have to go back in one more time with a white if this uh, doesn't happen yet. All right. Damn you, wins. Yeah, I'll come back in with white in just a second. I'm using a little bit of wash to touch up some spots. The white just was not cooperating with me today. That other side looks fine to me, though. It's just this side's being a little difficult for me. Let's see here. Let's grab just a dibble dab of red. Fix up under the eye. Yep. So I'm going to give that one second. We're going to come in and do that white line again. And then we should be good to go. Should be thin enough. Give it a good little mix. We're almost to the basing step. Okay. All right, white, cooperate this time. side match just a little bit better Woo! hyper focus hyper focus the one lens just turned out a little bit better than the other it's this white it's not cooperating with me today. I think that might just be as good as it's going to get today. I don't know. It's not... Yeah, whatever. Close enough. All right. So, here we are. Woo. Here we are, fellas. We're going to do one more quick, 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 quick thing. We're going to use our favorite brush and a little dab of red. And what we're going to do, we're going to come into this little thing here, and we're going to do a couple of red dots, like targets. It's going to be like... Boom. So, if that's going to focus, you might not be able to tell, but there's little red dots on the screen, so it's like threats are coming, something like that. Boop, boop, boop. Cool. And let's clean off our brush. Show you where we're at. Okay. Now, touch something real fast, and we will get ready to do the basing. Probably just going to be similar to last week's, to be honest with you. If 
I get some resin bases or uh, toppers maybe from Brush for Hire, Death Ray Designs, then we might change it up. Now, let's go ahead and get us some PVA white glue. Doesn't take much. Okay. They do. Um, so, fun fact, and you may or may not have known this, but I worked for Brush for Hire for five years, just about and whatever this November would have been five years I, I left in May uh, commissions through brush for hire just weren't coming up and uh, Austin's gone a different direction with this company that really just wasn't doing much for me to be honest so I moved on and focused more heavily on my business instead of that one uh, but I'm still closely associated I'm actually dis in discussions with him about maybe letting me get some sponsorship from him for my videos so I can do some base topper um, tutorials and basing things and give away some bases to viewers um, which is good for him and good for me it's good for me because it gives me stuff to give away it's good for him because I think some people still aren't familiar with what base toppers actually are and um, you know if let's say for example you you didn't know and you want a pack of them you go to your local club and go guys these are badass and then you know here's a website to buy them or Here's a website to buy them and use this coupon code from Justin Cloud or whatever, Amp Services. So that would be cool too. Which, fun fun enough, I got this laying here, which is funny. Um, so there you go. One of my dice. Alright, so what we're going to do, like the last guy, show you guys the barbed wire trick again. This is from Army Painter. Not to be confused with the Armed Painter. I wish I was associated, but I'm not. Where's the end of it here? There should be another end. If I can get this untangled. Alright, let me get my snips. There we go. Alright, so what we're going to do here is find the end of our barbed wire. So we've got our barbed wire end. We're going to get our little paintbrush. Let's find one here. Where have I sat these things? And works best if you get one with a little bit of a taper. And you just kind of start it around your paintbrush. Get um, get it set and roll it. And then get it scrunched together and roll it till you get about as much as you think you're going to want. And that's probably sufficient. You guys can't really tell, but there you go. Pull that out. Now you're going to use your little snips. Don't use your good ones, use your bad ones, because this might dent other ones, because it is metal. And now we've got a little bit of barbed wire for his base. At some point I'm going to do a video and show like some um, concrete and stuff like that, but this is quick and easy and all of them will uh, match pretty well, I think. Let's go ahead and get our basic materials. And we're just going to use PVA glue. Stuff on it. Okay, we don't need that right here anymore. Get out of the way. Boop. Okay. So let's um let's get some PVA on here first. And this is water soluble, so can use whatever paintbrush I still recommend a poo poo paintbrush which is what I will be using Oop, hang on missed a step here guys forgot gotta pull my tape off sorry about that I had them taped it down <laughs> all right so here we go let's put some of this down here no real wrong way to do it just try and minimize where it touches the model If it touches a little bit, that's okay. If it touches a lot, just come in with a smaller wet paintbrush and just smear it off. Do, 
do do once you're to this step like this is your home free usually you're getting towards the end we had just a little bit run over so here's a second I'm gonna use a paintbrush and get some off of his foot And this isn't super glue, so you get some on the ring of the base, just use your finger and wipe it off. Okay. Now we had a little bit run up on the edge of his boot, so we're going to get that off. Okay, now we're going to just grab him and swish him in a circle. Now I've got weather pigments in here, so I'm gonna like try and make sure his feet are rubbing up against the um, basin material because it's gonna it's gonna leave a little bit of a, a brown residue. So see how it's slightly discolored his feet? Looks dirty. And I'm not a big fan of all those rocks piling up right there, so let's just knock those off. We don't want all those rocks and put them back down in the basin material for just a second cover up the uh, PVA glue and there you go so now we're going to get a little bit of super glue um, this is just straight out of the bottle, I do have a giant giant bottle um, you can thin it down, you just don't want it to be too thin we're putting a dab of super glue right here and we're going to push down the um, barbed wire. Hold it for just a second. Okay, now we're going to dip it in here very gently. We don't want a lot of rocks, we just want a little bit of the sand stuff. Shake it a little. So it's going to cover up that super glue. So now it looks like your barbed wire is partially buried in the dirt. There you go. Okay, so now we're done with the dirt. Close that up. Um, slight caveat here. Shadow Claimer, thanks for the host, buddy. Um, now, the slight caveat here with the weathering pigment is it's going to get all of your fingers. You want to be in a well-ventilated area. Um, oh. Um. So, da, 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 da. Um. If you're trying to share a link, um, let me know. Say something in the, the chat if you're trying to share a link with me. Um, I've got a bot set up to stop any spam or anything. So if you uh, have a link and you want to share a model or something, let me know. And we'll do that. Um, anyway, the caveat here is uh, the stuff can get into the air and you can breathe it. So, uh. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um... My moderator set up my bots. He's more familiar with Twitch than me because I'm really new. Um, so he set that up. Um, yeah. So I'm not as familiar. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pretty new. <laughs> uh, but thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. I'm actually towards the end of this. So um, hang on one second. Uh, since you guys are all new and I have a whole crap load of viewers right now. Um, if you are interested in winning this model, type in... Um, why so red all one word and it'll put you into the drawing for the model if you would like to win it um, but I am almost done so you're gonna see the wrap-up stage here anyway back on topic um, if you um, if you, you're using weathering pigments in your basing ventilated area you don't want to like breathe a whole lot of it uh, and it's gonna get all over your fingers and on the models and if you don't seal it this weathering pigment can be rubbed off so when we seal it it's gonna help protect that so Okay, so we're done with this. Now for the um, grass, I'm just going to get grass. This is from Army Painter as well. I'm going to try this week to show this off a little bit better. But we are going to take a dribble of this, and we're going to put a little bit right here. Right by his foot. Do, 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 super glue. We're going to use our little uh, tweezers. We're going to pinch off a chunk, and we're just going to dribble it. Knock off the excess. 
Make sure we got it all in there. Now we're going to blow across it. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the, um, the grass stand up. So just drop it on super glue and blow across it. It's going to stand up. And then we're just going to kind of go where we want the rest of this to be. Put a little bit back here next to his back foot. Same thing with the tweezers, pinch, drop. Blow across it, drop a little bit more there. And got a little bit on the ring, but that's okay. We can tidy that up. Um, hang on one second. So this is how newbie I am to Twitch. Um, I use both. Um, I use Tufts for different types of projects. If I want a specific look or specific amount. I'll use the tufts. Um, no real preference. I like both. If I had tufts lay in here, I would show you. Um, I have some in another room, but they're the dead grass. I like the green grass for these guys right now. Um, but I do like the tufts. Um, but let me... Give me one second. I'm going to get my mod in here. How do I unban someone? Look at that. Alright, un van. Hey, there you go. Imperial torches should be able to pop in now. I apologize for that. Um, Gary Gecko, I think next week I might do a Black Templar. Um, I bought a uh, the box set that has the... Um, uh, four Imperial dudes, no, excuse me, six Imperial dudes. Hey, hey, we hear you. Yay! I bought the uh, pack that had the six Imperial dudes and the Chaos, so that gives me enough to do at least six different Space Marines. So right now I've done Imperial Fists, which I did uh, last week, and this week I did a Blood Angel. Uh, I'm going to try and do a Black Templar or an Iron Hands. It depends on if I can get the decal in time. Uh, I'm going to try and do a Salamander, uh, and a Dark Angel, and then maybe a Crimson Fist or a White Scar. Um, so it just depends on uh, what uh, what I have available. Um, white is very popular, so I can definitely try that. Um, so it just depends. After that, it's going to depend on kind of what stock I have to do video tutorials with, or streams with. But I'll be giving away... At least some more of the uh, Primaris stuff and Reaver stuff, which will be coming up. Nice. I'm going to assume your buddies just uh, told you there was a giveaway, so yeah. Um, I really, really, really wanted to do a um, Blood Ravens. I could not get the decal sourced because Forge World doesn't make them anymore. Um, so this one's kind of got like the veteran Blood Angel look, I think. I think the veteran Blood Angels had the um, yellow shoulder pad, so I'm not sure. Um, but I really wanted to do a Blood Raven really badly. Um, I think the red with the cream colored shoulders looks so good. So, but at least you guys are entered to win, which is good. Um, and so long as this remains popular, I will continue to try and do video tutorials each week. So, next thing we're going to do, and this is a big no-no for me, but because I'm live streaming, it's going to be for speed. Um, I'm actually going to paint the ring of this base black. Usually, once, um... Oh, okay, well, I don't know where they have yellow. I saw yellow somewhere, so he's got yellow. Um, thank you. Um, I'll talk to him and see what he says. Um... Anyway, I really want to do a Blood Raven, um, also because uh, Blood Ravens have like the cream shoulder and the cream helmet with the green lenses. 
I think these would really pop with those colors. Granted, the red's going to be basically the same, I think, um, but the rest would be different. So, Okay, that explains why the decal sheet has um, yellow and black. So, But, whatever, I'm a pesky ultramarine. Gilliman didn't train us in the ways of the Team Jacob and Team Edwards stuff. Okay, so anyway, my general rule of thumb is once I put super glue on a model. Oh, gotcha, nice. Uh, anyway, my general rule of thumb is I don't touch a model with uh, a paintbrush once I've put super glue on it for a while. Um, I'm going to do that on live stream because I want to be able to finish it for you guys to see. Let me find a paintbrush real quick to do this ring with. There we go. Alright, so we're going to do the ring uh, black here. So we've got the grass down. And the reason that I usually don't touch a model with a paintbrush once I've put super glue on it for a while is I have ruined some thinking the super glue was dry. Once you touch bristles to a super glue, it, they're done. There ain't no saving that. And I think uh, the guys that raided me, I think you, um, you missed the chat about Death Ray Designs. Um, I was the lead commission artist for Brush for Hire slash Death Ray Designs for almost five years. And, um, hang on, moisture accelerate. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was, uh, I painted for him for almost five years, and I'm going to try and talk to him about sponsoring me on Twitch. Air quotes here. Not, you know, what you might consider a sponsor may not be what he actually does. But if Austin is willing to donate some uh, basing materials, I will do different bases on Marines that I give away, or videos on just basing in general and give away um, some packs. Um, hang on here. I'll show you a real quick look. For example, if Austin was to donate some of these, this type of thing, it's 45 inserts. I forget what he charges for this. And these are all acrylic. And you just pop them out, and they're real thin, and you just glue them on top of the bases. And you can paint these, and they look really cool, and they're really affordable. If he wants to donate a couple packs like this to me, I'll totally do some uh, video or some streams, show you guys how they work, and um, give away a couple of packs or something to you guys. And I think that'll help him, it'll help me. And for people who aren't as familiar with that stuff, I think it'll be, uh, be pretty good. Okay. So let's get the rest of this uh, black on here. Here's a pink one. There we go. Um, I am not in Greensboro. I'm in Asheboro, but I I'm not far away. Yeah, basically all the models you saw for the last five years, 99.99 repeating are models I painted if they were from Brush for Hire's Facebook page. Oh, yeah, yeah, close enough. When people ask where I'm at in North Carolina, if they're, you know, semi-familiar with the area, I just say I'm near Greensboro because more people are familiar with that than Trashboro. I'm just doing a thin coat of black around the rim here. There we go. And let me find something to set this guy on. He needs to hang out up here for now. There we go. Because he was catching some of the grass flakes on the, the ring there. Uh, blue table painting. Uh, Ashburn does have it. That's Kit Kringle. Actually, the owner of Kit Kringle is in the stream right now. Yeah, I just tagged him. Um, uh, then I am not in the PBT Discord then. I thought, well, I guess blue table painting would be BTP. <laughs> um, no, I am not in that Discord. I've never even heard of it. Okay, so next step, which is the almost finished step. I'm going to go ahead and throw on a glove real quick. I'm going to be moving some of this out of the way here. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, nice. Nice. My uh, my first day trying to stream painting, uh, Kenny Boucher from um, Next Level Painting actually followed me, which is really cool. The guy is freaking amazing. Hang on one second, fellas. I'm almost ready. Yeah, I'm familiar with, um, I am familiar with, uh, Gaming Underground too. So is Hireman. Um, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the store. I won't go into why, because I'm in a public forum right now. But if we're ever in a one-on-one, -on -one, I'll talk to you. Um, the raffle will be here in, like, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, no, we are almost done. Uh, I am finishing this guy up. He is in the, like, 99.9% .9 stage right now. I'm waiting on that ring to dry so I can do the next step. Oh, I like him. My favorite painter, though, is Lester Bursley. Um, he's awesome. Um, Pyretic, if you're from Greensboro, um, have we met? Are you in the Ashboro Facebook group? If you are, you've definitely seen my posts for sure. Um, while this is drying, there is a little silver spot I need to touch up. Give me one second, fellas. I'm not even going to thin that. I'm just going to put it straight on. Dude, you should... Um, If you are on Facebook, send me a message on the Armed Painter, or Amp Services, and uh, I'll add you to our Facebook group for Kit Kringle. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. We need to get you in the Ashboro one. All right, there's a little spot on this guy where the uh, silver got rubbed off just a little bit, so we're going to go in and just touch this up. Just a smidge, just a smidge. Do a light bit of a highlight on that inadvertently. If I really want to spend a million hours on it, I'd come and highlight more of the stuff, but he is rapidly approaching done. Oh, nice. Uh, what, um, let's see. Oh, Triad War Warhammer. Yeah, that's what Gamer Dad in season. So, we got some locals in here. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta touch up this red spot real quick. Screwed it up with the silver. There we go. Yeah, can't quite get this right. Uh, dude, I am tired. As soon as I'm done, I'm getting some food. And you know I like to eat. Okay, cool. I'm going to clean off the paintbrush here, fellas. I know I'm crossing the screen with my arm, which looks really goofy. All right, guys, so the next step looks like the base is dry, so I can do this. We are going to matte varnish this guy. Going to give our matte varnish a good shake. Make sure my airbrush is not um, obstructed because I haven't used it in like three hours. All right, I would highly recommend if you do any airbrushing, if you're going to spray a varnish, make sure you're wearing um, um, a face mask. Don't breathe this stuff. I'm not wearing one because live stream but you'll want to don't be me don't be a hero all right so what we're going to do here we're just going to matte varnish this guy seal everything up and hopefully seal some of this um uh weathering pigment that's on his feet cover up the shoulder pads that had the gloss varnish on them
I think. Missed a little spot on his foot. Hang on one second. And that's probably going to do it. Shoulder got a good amount. Good amount. I don't think we see anything cool. Um, let me turn this real quick so I can get the back of the ring here. Plop him down real quick. All right, I'm going to clean the airbrush. We're going to do one last step, and then we're going to do the giveaway. Clean and paint brushes. Sorry, I'm still here, guys. I know there's no hands on the screen. If you, you missed the beginning where I was airbrushing, so there's a lot of airbrush cleaning in between sprays. And that's what we're going on here. And we're actually, so give me a second to let him dry so we can do the last step. So the guys that raided, uh, did you see this on Facebook or was it somewhere else that you found out? Okay. Alright, we're going to see if this guy's dry enough for the last step. Let's see. So his shoulder pad is dry. Nice. All right. So we're going to come in here, guys, and we're going to actually get a little bit of gloss varnish. We're just going to use, the, and this is the old Citadel, um, and it's real thin, which is what we want. Place the clean paint brushes here. Get our mostly favorite brush. And we're going to come in with a little bit of this gloss varnish. I'm going to go over um, the inside of his little GPS thing here. Just put a little bit on the screen. Because it's going to give a little bit of sheen, which we want. We're going to come in and we're going to put a little bit on the... Uh, gold portion of his weapon here just to bring back up a little bit of a gloss look which you can matte varnish then paint the gold but I like to seal things so it's less likely to get rubbed off we're gonna put a little bit over his um, lens on his little scope like that and then we're gonna come in and do a little bit on his chest. Thin that out. Do, do, do. Don't want it to pull up too much. It looks like I've gotten all of it. Yeah. All right. And that will uh, that'll finish that guy up. There's nothing left that I'm going to do on him. Uh, except for maybe I might paint the ring black one more time. Hold on. You guys get to watch me do this. Yippee Skippy! Hurry up and do the giveaway! We want a free model! Yeah, but... Got, it got a little bit of debris on it and hazed out, so... And I like to have the, I want the crisp blackness. You can fix this too by uh, <laughs> painting on some cork or something so you don't have to repaint the rings of your models black. But I'm used to it. Here we go. Okay, welcome back, Nord. Alright, so let's plop this guy on top of this right here. Cool. 
All right, so last call for anybody in the chat um, that wants to win the model. <laughs> Make sure you type in um, why so red, all one word, no spaces. If you want to win, it's what you got to type to get entered. I'm going to give you guys just a couple minutes. We're going to do the drawing, and then my ass is going to get some food because I'm hungry. Do 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 Let's see here. Let me zoom in on this. Hello, look at my head, people. Look at my head. I've got a little turntable too that's motorized, but limited with my camera right now. Alright, well, I think that is enough time. Uh, I have no idea what's for dinner. Probably gonna be junk food. We're going to go over to Nightbot real quick, my thingy. Everything's good. People have typed. And I'm going to go ahead and do the the uh, the drawing here. So, five, four, three, two, one. All right, if nobody typed, I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. This is what happens. All right, here it goes. Gary Gecko. So, if you would like to send me your info, if you want to get with me on Facebook, we can. And if you don't trust Twitch, awesome. Um, if you uh, if you don't want it, we'll re-roll it. If you do want it, I will send it to you. Um, Type me or send me a message on either Twitch or Facebook. If you want to go to my business page, it's the Armed Painter, um, and you can send me your uh, address. I will ship this to you and get it in the mail ASAP. I'm gonna try and take some professional photos, so it might take a day or two for them to get in the mail, but I will send it to you, buddy. Awesome, sounds good. Um, for all you new guys who popped in. Um, Hate to be the dude who uh, who throws out the uh, um, uh, the shameless self advertising, but if you guys don't mind, give me a follow and check me out. That'll be awesome. Uh, I try and do a painting tutorial on Tuesdays now. Um, Wednesdays, if I have time, I should be in here doing a, um, a workbench Wednesday type thing where I'll be working on whatever um, project I have or personal models and just kind of hanging out. Um, and then during the evenings or when I'm not painting, I do gaming stuff as well. So I would be uh, definitely down if you guys want to give me a follow and uh, hang out sometime. So, uh, But anyways, I hope you uh, enjoyed the, the uh, stream, fellas. Give you guys one last little look because this guy's going to go to a new home. He looks so pretty. Hopefully you shall enjoy him. I'll get him in the mail to you ASAP. So, but I'm popping off, guys. I will catch you guys later. Uh, and before I log, actually, because he had a question. Hold on. Bum, 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 bum. I'm still here. Give me one second. Uh, thank you guys for checking it out. That's the Facebook page, uh, Gary Gecko, if you want to check me out. Uh, if anyone else wants to, you are welcome to check that out. And uh, I'm going to log off now. Thank you for hanging out. I will catch you guys later.